Welcome, one and all. Thank you for joining us today on the H3 Podcast Live. Look who's back in the studio, your girl. Today's episode is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club, Quip, and Honey. I gotta say, we have been slamming all day. We're a little bit late, only four minutes, but I was thinking, I was like, man, we used to be like an hour late. And we also didn't even prepare. Like, we've been here since 8 a.m., and I gotta say, I'm proud of all the guys back there. We've been slamming and jamming. So I know we've had all kinds of weird beginnings before on YouTube. How'd we stick it? How did we do it yeah. now? We've been, we've been trying. To, sure. YouTube's well, a different game, man. You get it right. You get one <laughs> shot. So, Dan, well, how'd we do? Uh, well, it felt good out here. I but, don't hear uh, you in the... Oh, with, everything's hit. Shit's hitting the flan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you are. We're all good. Uh, I, I will have to go back and check. It, it felt pretty good. Felt the good. timing felt good out here. Felt but good. We will have to... Uh, all right. Let's let's uh, let's just today's forward. show. We've got a slamming hot one, you guys. Let me tell you what's coming up. Ian, the intern, whose birthday it is today, congratulations to him, has put together a PowerPoint presentation for us on the Drake versus Pusha T drama. There's been some real ugly back and forth between the two of those freestyle battle that's reminiscent of the good old '90s when rappers would just were straight up mm-hmm. killing each other. So let's hope that it doesn't escalate there. But the fireworks are are setting off. And Ian is really, he's the keeper of culture and knowledge. And he's going to come in. He's going to tell us really what's going on. Mm Because break down the lyrics hopefully as well. What makes him the keeper of culture? Well, he's a young man. And he's basically, he's weirdly obsessed with Kanye. (laughs) Ian, sometimes he, he, he concerns me. He concerns me to some degree. <laughs> For example, yesterday, he's on the freeway. He pops a flat tire. He rolls over to the side of the 101 freeway, probably one of the most dangerous places to be in the world. <laughs> there's there's, there's side of the 101 and running the bulls, number two. <laughs> he pulls over, and he's like, I know I should call AAA to come change my tire, but I'm, I have to watch this Kanye stream because <laughs> he was streaming his new album. So he's sitting there watching this Kanye live stream because he's so into it. <laughs> While cars zip past mm-hmm. him on the 101. Yeah. So he's I, he's he's in deep. That would get you qualified for the keeper of culture. Yeah, he's the keeper of culture. I think an important detail here is, too, yeah. that uh, the live stream uh, for about two hours was just a open field with horses. So that that's what kept him on the side of the road. Ian, are you on the mic? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm here. So tell me, when you were on the side of the 101, did anything danger? Did you ever feel that you were in danger? At that point, it didn't really matter because the stream was up. <laughs> right, sure. And, and, and as, as nothing happened in the stream, did you find yourself more and more frustrated and confronted with the you know, actuality that you were going to have to call AAA and possibly miss uh, something? Well, once that started to come into play, I did get a little worried, but my battery looked good, so I, I was okay. <laughs> what did I tell you? Is this guy qualified or what? <laughs> so he's coming in. He's going to let us know what's going on. Up uh, after that, we've got Kyle the Cougar Champ and Skippy the Virgin. We got <laughs> these two great minds on the phone together. These two guys are the founding members of our Great Minds League, the League of Extraordinary Minds. <laughs> and we got them on the phone together to see how they interact. Because I thought, hey, you know, Kyle, he's a Cougar Champ. He's seen the ropes. He's been there. He's done this. Mm-hmm. Maybe he can give Skippy some advice. Yeah. Well, eh. <laughs> Fireworks flew. I have to say, I did not expect what happened because they ended up actually getting in a, in a bit of a fight. Yeah. <laughs> Skippy got super angry at Kyle. So that was that was really something. So we rec- actually recorded that this morning because I, I we always have all these technical difficulties when I have calls. And I wanted to make sure mm-hmm. when you have two beautiful minds like this, you want to make sure that every, every word is heard. Right. It's that important. So I cannot wait to share that with you guys. And finally, uh, we've got a new segment called Ethan Go to Your Room, <laughs> where I face the music. I've said, look, when you're on a podcast, you say a lot of dumb shit. That's kind of the nature of the beast. I'm sitting here with an open mic for two hours, okay? Mm-hmm. So I've said a lot of dumb shit here, and a lot of the stuff that we should, I, I'm not even throw you, I <laughs> should correct the record on, okay? So Ethan, go well, to your I room. Well, I just don't say anything, so. Which is, kind of, I wish I had that option. <laughs> Not much to correct for me. <laughs> yeah, no, you're smart. So that's coming up. And not only that, we've got voice messages and news and so much more to get to, my guys. Um, 
So let, with that being said, let's get right the flip into it. Now, today we were supposed to have Tommy Wiseau and Greg Sestero on. But <laughs> once again, Tommy Wiseau is probably the most challenging guest ever to book of all time. I didn't want to say anything the first time because I was trying to keep it professional, you know. But he literally, we had him booked. And the, the, it was the morning of or the evening of. I was like, I had a bad feeling. I was like, I get the feeling Tommy's not coming. <laughs> and, you know, in that week, I prepared so much for him. I was like, yeah. I was knee deep in all of this Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> Listen, you can only watch so much Tommy Wiseau. And I had watched a lot of Tommy Wiseau. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> so that morning, I was like, Dan, I got a feeling, man. I don't know. Can you just reach out to them and make sure they're coming? So Dan reaches out to them the morning of. And they're like, oh, yeah, sorry. Tommy's really busy. He's not going to make it. <laughs> So I was going to be polite and be like, eh, scheduling issues. But this time, it happened again. Well, not exactly this time, but... It kind of happened again. And this time was a little stranger, but they're... I don't know. You couldn't make it in. Well, the only time they could make it was right when I was uh, coming off the plane, basically. But we called so... and we emailed and everything. He's got this receptionist. At, at a yahoo.com email that apparently says receptionist, but I have a feeling it's just him. <laughs> Was that your impression, Dan, that we were just talking to Tommy? Yeah, yeah. We, we were skeptical right from the get-go. It, the, the at Yahoo just seemed suspect from the beginning. I don't know. <laughs> so we're, we'll get him in here eventually, but... So anyway. He's really... Uh, he's we, really... Were, we were considering doing it, but it was so tight with my flight that... I don't think it would have worked. No, it wouldn't have worked, yeah. Anyway, God bless Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> what a story, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. I wish you were here to, so we could expand on it, but hopefully soon we can get... Hi, doggy. Yeah, we can get him in here and get the true, real story of Tommy Wiseau. Um, Ela, how was your trip? You just got back on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. It was okay. How's Israel? Israel... It's weird. Every time I go back, it, I guess I get more used to the States the longer I'm here. Yeah. So every time I go back, it gets weirder and weirder for me. Right. Like, oh, you realize how loud everyone is? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like everyone is yelling all the time. It's so the... funny. The Israeli stereotypes are so <laughs> real. Like, the stereotype is that they're these balding, shouting, <laughs> Mizrahi, you know, everyone's doing this. You go there. Yeah. It's real. <laughs> it is. It's real, man. I remember the last time we were there. This is such an Israeli experience. We took a taxi from oh, Tel God. Aviv to Ela's parents' house. Why don't you tell the oh, story? Because you were speaking Hebrew with him. I was just. Well, a I was like, I need to go to this address, my parents' house, and it's like it's near a famous junction. So I was like near this junction, mm -hmm. but I'll tell you how to get there when we get there, because no one knows the exact address. Right. They don't really put ways. Not all the, not all the drivers. It's like old school. They're old school. You also can't pay with card, um, which is like I got used to it here. That's <laughs> they beat their kids in Israel. They're old school. They don't do that. Some do. Some do. But um, so anyway, we get to that junction, and then he's like, he's about to continue straight when you need to make a left, and I'm like, you gotta go left here. And he he just refused. He's like, no, I'm going straight here. This is not what you told me. I'm like, just make a left. It's like we're two minutes away. And he wouldn't do it. And then we just, I don't I don't even remember. Well, he he just out. kept he, he, insisting. We, we had to, it was on the meter, which is what I didn't understand. Right. We were paying him. We weren't not trying to scam him. He yeah. kicked us out basically on the side of at, the at that of the junction. freeway, it was a super <laughs> it's busy junction, and we basically got kicked out because this guy refused to drive another five yeah. minutes to Ela's house. And, and then, like, and then he was like, he, putting on the you know the receipt, like here's what I what I'm gonna charge you, you know, when they like close it and mm -hmm. it prints the receipt. And I was like, I'm not paying you. You're not taking me where I need to go. Ela was and being just... Ela was being Israeli. You guys should have seen it. <laughs> She's shouting in Hebrew. He's shouting in Hebrew. There's all this going on. Can you shout at Hebrew? Say, do me a favor. Say, uh, I'm not, oh, I'm not no. fucking paying you. Say that in Hebrew. <laughs> I don't, I don't curse in Hebrew. I'm not paying you. Say that in Hebrew. 
אני לא משלמת לך. That's good, but too happy. <laughs> but anyway. So, yeah, yeah, we got off at the junction and then I had to call my dad. And he came and picked us up. Yeah. But that's, that's just one little thing that would happen to you. That's typical. Yeah, that's Israel. But one thing that did happen that is worth talking about is that Ela's brand new whack book air. <laughs> I don't think you're going to correct me now. That you dropped $3,400 <laughs> on. Stopped working. It, it wouldn't charge. Yeah. I don't know why. I plugged it in. left for the whole day I was like I'm gonna come back it would be fully charged and then it was dead I just found and... that so hilarious <laughs> you know uh, I'm sorry when you spent... I had a converter yeah. and I, I I don't know what happened it was supposed to work yeah <laughs> I don't know when you spent thirty four hundred dollars it's gotta work it's only been like a month yeah I gotta say that my razor laptop that costs a thousand dollars less has been kicking butt Yeah, once but again, you didn't take it to Israel, so... What, there's just something in the air there? <laughs> you guys yelled at by too many Israelis, it just stops yeah. working. But the Razer laptop is really slamming, I gotta say. 2,000, 3,000, I've been loving, I set this up at my TV in, in our bedroom, I plug in a wireless keyboard and mouse, and I game, mm -hmm. PC games, on my TV with this baby, and it crushes. I don't know what to tell you. I, well, I need to go to the Wackbook store yeah. to get... I'm, this is not my charger right now. I right. still don't have a charger. But actually, I think we have a... Um, whoa. We have a call-in from somebody from Apple. Really? Here calling in right now that they actually wanted to talk to you about uh, what happened to your computer, Ela. Okay. Um, oh. Hello? Yes, hello? Hey, uh, is this, uh, someone from Apple? This is Apple, <laughs> yes. How are you? I'm fine. We've just been having this issue with Ela's laptop, and it just doesn't seem right that, that, you know, this piece would break for $300 or $400. Oh, I'm sorry that you don't know how to use it. Uh, I'm sure I can assist you with that. Did you take it anywhere? Did you take it somewhere, Ela? Yes, I took it to Israel. Oh, to Israel. Did any Israelis yell around it? No. <laughs> are you sure? Because, I mean, it's Israel. Who am I speaking to? Oh, this is Ringo. Ringo. Why does it sound like you're in heaven? What is this angelic music playing? <laughs> oh, I'm at the Genius Bar. Oh, the Genius Bar. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> this is just how it sounds. So, um, what do we do? How do we fix this? Well, first of all, you're going to have to become certified to use an Apple charger. We offer a program, though. <laughs> Would you like to uh, get signed up for it? It's a... How do I fix it? I just want to fix this piece. <laughs> well, you... You want to fix it? We don't fix things at Apple. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, I hang up on this, on this clown. That was Apple, apparently. Called into the show. Ringo. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable that they just dialed in like that. Really shocking. Is that your personal number? Yeah, I just, I'm dialed in, <laughs> you know. We're on tight. Um, all right, we've got I saw this video. This is so good. Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest, he, he seems like such a wholesome guy, right? Yeah, but he's not. Well. Right? I don't know if we can. Well, well here's, here's the clip, and this is just so good. I actually thought he was gay. I almost didn't even have a doubt about it. But he, on, well, what is the show? American Idol or what was it? What's the name of the show? Um... Top. One of those. One of these talent shows, whatever. They're all the same. Um, I don't know how they fucked up this bad. He doesn't know that they came back. And he's flirting <laughs> with Katy Perry, like in a really creepy way. And it just blows my mind that a show this big could blunder like they didn't know they were back. Well, just go ahead and play it, Dan. We're on. The mom's pretty. My mom? Well... I hope the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Ooh. You are too, but you're not a mom. Yeah. Not yet. You want to talk about it? What? Don't I'm late to Don't start. Don't start. Don't start. Don't start. <laughs> this face <laughs> when he's like... I think we're back. Oh, we're back? Yes. Oh, is back? this real TV? Oh, this is it. Oh. <laughs> oh, see, are, we, are we professionals? <laughs> yeah. Damn. <laughs> I, I've seen it. You, 
I've seen people saying, you know, they thought maybe it was a bit, but there's a moment when he no, looks his up. face, yeah. And he does one of these, right? <laughs> and you're like, that's real. <laughs> he, he says to her, he says, your mom's hot. Yeah. And then he, and then he says, you're not a mom yet. Do you want to talk about it? It's weird. <laughs> but it's so beautiful that this was captured <laughs> live. Ryan Seacrest cre- like, bro, this is not the time or place even, like, if- Is this a Me Too moment? Is this a subtle Me Too moment? To have the balls to creep on her that blatantly, right? Were there allegations about him, too? And, like, um, the Me Too stuff? I think there was something about a hairdresser. I don't remember what the allegations were. But, damn. You want to talk about it? <laughs> I love that. Are you a mom? Let's talk about it. Play that. I, I'm gonna see to see that again, Dan. Yeah, here you go. We're on. Your mom's pretty. My mom? Well, I hope the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Ooh. The pen clicking on the table, <laughs> like. You are too. But you're not a mom. Yeah. Is this the conversations about? that what? take place off off yeah. screen? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Are we live? I think we're back. Are we back? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Is this real TV? Oh, this is it. Oh. <laughs> oh, see, are, we, are we professionals? Yeah. That is so weird. <laughs> we're on. The mom's Just pretty. Like, uh, you know, this per- this is like a m- the biggest production in the world. <laughs> Makes me feel a bit, a bit better about what we're doing here. You want to talk about it? It's so awkward. So, so that is a subtle me too mo- moment. Well, I have to say, a very subtle one. I have to, I, I <laughs> kind of agree because I have to say, to have the balls to talk like that to not only anyone but Katy Perry, like the yeah. biggest, most famous, powerful woman in Hollywood, but also he's doing it in front in of other front people. of other dudes. <laughs> it's hey, you want to talk about it? <laughs> Damn, what happened to his face? His face looks kind of... Looks like there were, uh, you were right, his, there's a... What do we got? Stylist that, uh... Has accused television hosts of multiple instances of sexual harassment and abuse over seven years as she worked for him. Well, if you worked for him for seven years, it's almost kind of hard to be like, take those very seriously. I had, I was so miserable for seven years. Well... Am I off the mark? I mean, you quit, right, after seven fucking years of being sexually mm-hmm. harassed? Maybe a year, maybe no. two years. Seven. That's high school and college. It's hard to do mm-hmm. better as it's a stylist than Ryan Seacrest, though, right? I mean, that's that's a hard gig to walk away from. <sighs> it's probably good money. Well, I don't know what she accused him of, though. The, open it, it up. Let's see. What are that? Really... What do we got here? Just making comments like that? You want to talk about it? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I like what you do with my hair. So you're not a mom yet. You want to talk about it? <laughs> what can I do? Can I help you become a mom? Let's see, it says, uh, Ryan Seacrest groped her vagina, rubbed his erect penis Yikes. against her while clad only in his underwear, and slapped her buttocks so hard that it left a large welt still visible oh hours later. Can I tell you, after seeing that, I believe it. Oh my god. I believe it after I saw that. <laughs> that was like a really creepy, weird thing. You want to talk about mm, it? Yeah. Your mom's hot. Your mom's hot. Can I rub my boner on you? You want to talk about <laughs> making a baby? Kind of interesting. Who does that? Can you imagine doing that? But uh, but e- if I'm Ryan Seacrest, I wouldn't even... Like, you know that it's a hard cut back to live television. I wouldn't even fucking blink. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to be creepy weird, I'll do it, like, you know, after the show. Yeah. I wonder if she's so, like, protected that he almost doesn't even have access to her. He's like, shit, this is my only time <laughs> to make a pass on Katy Perry in between... In, in, in the commercials. Yeah. Also, it takes a lot of, I mean, I know you're Ryan Seacrest and you're, you're kind of a big deal, but come on, dog, you're not. You're not Katy Perry material. Right? Come on. <laughs> Back me up. No, I agree. I don't think, I don't think he has a chance with her. I, he's got no <laughs> fucking chance. <laughs> but maybe just, you know, he can help her be a mom and nothing more. Yeah, you can help me be a mom. Let's talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> you want to put your dick in me and, and impregnate me? Nice. All right. 
We've been on this long enough. But I just thought that was real, uh... I thought it was an interesting glimpse <laughs> inside... Yeah. Behind the camera, right? It is. I believe it. Um, God, we've been talking about Ian a lot, but Ian was actually banned from the Kanye subreddit. Dan was telling me that, and I just... I, I get worried about that boy. <laughs> I feel like I, I'm, I'm caring for him. I feel like he's in my custody. <laughs> and I just... I get worried about him. So what happened? Sorry, guest, the... you are banned from posting. How the f- I don't think- it, w- it wasn't the subreddit, right? Oh yeah, it was like- Here, your mic's open, go ahead. No, it's <laughs> the main Kanye fan site. It's called kanye to the dot com. <laughs> kanye to the dot com. And you've been basically thrown out of this community, Ian. Yeah, they got me out of there pretty quick. Why don't you come in here? Come in here. We, we're, we're gonna get into the Drake Pusha T thing. Let's- let's- Let's get your ass in here. We got a lot to talk about. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm worried about you, Ian. You're, mm-hmm. you're, you're in too deep. You're pulling over on the side of the road to watch Kanye. You're getting banned from Kanye. Why were you banned from a Kanye forum? <laughs> uh, to not go too much into it, I posted a leak to an unreleased song. Mm-hmm. And that is not in the rules. Did you know it wasn't in the rules when you posted it? Yes. So why did you do it? To seem like I was in the know. Interesting. Cool. Is there is there street cred in, in these forums that you're trying to impress other people there? In the digital streets, yeah. Right. <laughs> There's some out there. And did and was there talk about you being banned? Are you a big contributor to this uh, forum? I thought I was, but they forgot me pretty quickly. <laughs> Nobody cared about your ass no, disappearing. They, Interesting. And did you have you made any pleas to get unbanned with them? I have tried. Yes. No response. Well, see, they banned my IP address, and so I tried to make an account under a uh, a different IP, and somehow they knew, and they banned me again. Well, <laughs> they're serious about it. Now, when yeah. you when you knowingly broke the rules, did you expect that you just had enough street cred that you could go under the radar? Yeah, I was like, I'm <clears throat> I'm big dog, you know. What was your username on the forum? I can't say that. Oh wow! Really? I can't reveal it. Really? Tell me the username. No, no, I, I can't, I can't. Why? <laughs> Not that it's bad, but it all still exists there. Mm. And all the... Po- I, you don't I want to dig in. I, I, I don't care about your post history. I'm just curious what your... You may is. not, but who knows? I can't have these people... Can you give me... A, okay, all right. Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. I don't want people to... I don't uh, even know you could be, like, banned from a fan side. Oh, yeah. I don't even know. Well, Ian, you take things too far, quite clearly. Yeah, they went... We like fans, but... You're a little too You're much. You're too much of a, of a fan. fan. Let me ask, how did you feel when you when you realized you were banned? I went, "Oh, I'll get back on. They can't, they need me they here. They can't ban me." <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm valuable to this community. Right. No. I Are you looking for like other artists now to be to be joining their fan sites? Yeah, not no one has no one really is doing it for me. Mm. I'm not getting that Interesting. Energy. You feel alienated now. Do you feel like you don't have any place to belong now that you've been banned? No, I'm just floating around. I tried Reddit. Doesn't cut it. Kanye subreddit is too lightweight, right? Mm-hmm. Not hardcore <laughs> enough. What's yeah. an interesting Kanye fact you could share with us? The deepest, seediest, weirdest one. The weirdest one. Uh, he spent two years in China as a toddler. Yeah. Lived okay. there. That's a weird one, I Ian. I'm not going to. I won't take that away from you. <laughs> Definitely hit, hit me on that one. Um, by the way, we made a stinger for Ian, Dan. Can you leave and come back in? <laughs> just yeah, come get, on, just Ian. Just leave and come back in, would you please? <laughs> we had we had a hot dad put together a whole stinger. Clo- don't pretend. Close the door. Come back in. All right. Go ahead, everybody. Now. <laughs> Very good, very Thank nice. You. By the way, I'm announcing anybody out there who's up for the challenge. I want to make an Ian the Intern song competition. So if you have any, if you want to take a stab at it and give uh, your submissions, send them on over to Dan. Dan, what is it? What's the email? Podcast at h 3 productionscom That's it. Okay. That's it. Send your product. I want stingers. I want full remakes. I want to hear everything you've got, and we'll go over all the top submissions. Um, 
So Ian has put together basically, you know what? We should take a quick break. We're, it's about that time. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Ian is going to give us a presentation on Jake versus Pusha T, all the drama and all the juice that has transpired. I'm looking forward to it. it better not be boring. I'll try my best. All right. I'm counting on you. All right. We're going to need all the help we can get here today. All right. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Dollar Shave Club delivers everything you need to look, feel, and smell. Ah, your very best. You name it, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothpaste, hair gel, even a wipe that will leave your tush feeling tingly clean, which is the perfect adjective to describe my anus, tingly. I'm a big fan of their amber amber and lavender calming body wash. I gotta tell you, it's masculine, but it smells good. People will give you a sniff and they'll say, yes, it smells flowery and lavendery, but it's still masculine, right? And I know you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Ela, she cuddles up to me sometimes, and she smells me. And I'm like, this, come on. She's like, no, <laughs> I've never amber. that that lavender, that amber. Ah! I'm like, all right, dude, <laughs> give me some space for Christ's sake. Crowd me. It's that good. <laughs> all of Dollar Shaves Club's products are made from top shelf ingredients that won't break your budget. You'll feel the difference. Plus, shipping is included with your membership. And here's a great way to try a bunch of Dollar Shave Club products for just five bucks. You can get their daily essential starter set. It comes with body cleanser, one wipe Charlie's, their amazing, tingly inducing (laughs) butt wipes, their world famous shave butter, and their best razors. You know it, you love it. The six blade executive, weighty, meaty handle. Make your face tingle. You'd be tingling all over, boy. How about this? Your anus isn't the only place you'll be tingling. <laughs> Good pitch for Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> um, keep the blades coming for a few bucks more a month. And add in shampoo, toothpaste, or anything else you need for the bathroom. Check it all out at dollarshaveclub.com slash h3. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash h3. Thank you guys so much for sp- supporting our sponsor. Thank you, Dollar Shave Club. Let's get right back into it, shall we? <laughs> Cut him. All right. We've been waiting for you. Thank you guys for sticking around. We're back. Um, first of all, before we get into this, Ian, it is your birthday. <laughs> yeah. And uh, how old are you today? Twenty-four. Well, as you know, we're very we are worried about you. You yeah. have some strange habits. We love you. We appreciate you. You do good work. And we want to show a gesture and take care of you. Can you look under your seat, please? <laughs> I have repeatedly said that I am Oprah. And as <laughs> Oprah does, you know that I always come bearing gifts. Oh, man. I thought you were <laughs> tricking me. Nope, not a joke. Read it. Okay. Read it. Read what's on the front. It says, happy birthday, Ian the intern from the entire H3 gang. Open it up. <laughs> He's opening the envelope. I've always wanted to get Oprah. <laughs> You're getting you Oprah right now, right, Doug. Go ahead. Come on, describe what's... Okay, happy birthday from the H3 It says game. the same thing, actually. <laughs> All right, really drill it in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only use on salmon burritos. What is it? A $50 Sharky's card. $50 <laughs> Sharky's <laughs> gift card. You son of a bitch. You think that I'm going to let that go. You're dead wrong. I swear to God, if I, I'm cooked in with Sharky's and I'm going to check that gift card on a daily basis, if I see you bought anything with salmon burritos, I'll know. I, I just finished using the other one, and I was like, I'm oh. free of it. I'm out. You have to use all that. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm How many it. meals was it? Two? Three? I got a couple, shared it a little bit, you know. But, 50 bucks. Well, thank you. So I should have got a thousand just to torture <laughs> your ass. Never ending. Salmon forever. Me. Next so, birthday. Happy birthday. Man. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy happy it. Birthday. That. Enjoy that. Okay. You have put together a presentation for us, Ian. Yes. Uh, take us away. All right. So, as most of you know... Pusha T versus Drake. Yep. Clash of the Titans here. Is Pusha T a Titan? He's a Titan in, in, in my eyes. Okay. Okay. But then he is. Then he is a Titan. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. All right. So to understand this conflict, we must go back. Okay. 2002. Wow. That's a lot. This has been brewing a while now. Jesus Christ. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I told you this was comprehensive. This man. is this is possibly more than I bargained for right here. A simpler time. The rapper Birdman, aka Baby, aka the number one stunner, 
releases his <laughs> debut album. It features Pusha T on the Pharrell produced track, What Happened to That Boy. It is a jam. I'd say so. It's a great song. But these happy times are not here to stay. You wrote It's a Jam. I wrote It's a you Jam. I co signed It's a Jam. Okay. Because you're like, It's a Jam. I'd say so. It's a really good song. <laughs> the PowerPoint says It's a okay, Jam. Right. So I agree with you. I want to make sure that you wrote that because it was. In 2006, Disaster Strikes. Right. Rap superstar and Birdman protege Lil Wayne is photographed for the cover of Vibe magazine wearing Bape clothing. Really? Is that a problem? Uh -oh. Can you imagine? The what's, nerve of this man. Well, what's the issue? Well, the issue is... Next slide, Next I slide, guess. Dan. <laughs> Give it a little spin there. All right. <laughs> Pusha T is known for often wearing babe clothing alongside Pharrell. He believes that Mr. Wayne is stealing his style. It's a brand. It's a clothing Well, oh, give me brand. a freaking break. It's tough out here. There he is. There he is so in Pusha the babe. So Pusha T is upset that Lil Wheezy is wearing babe. Yes. I, I bet you I know who's not upset he's wearing Bape. Who? Bape. Oh, definitely not. So then Pusha T responds on the... Is on, there a Reader's Digest version of this? I mean, if you want to zip through it, there's just not too much. Okay, a couple right. slides. Okay. 30, 40. Jesus, man. Yeah, keep the, going. 30, 40? <laughs> you know. It's, all right. This is Ian's... Okay. So anyways, there's some beef. Pusha attacks him, stealing my style. Lil Wayne says... Who the fuck is Pharrell? Mm. Do you really respect him? He wore Bape and y'all thought he was weird. I wore it and you thought it was hot. So he's calling him out. Pusha T and <laughs> and Lil Wayne are having some struggle. Okay. He's looking sad here. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Ian, what the fuck? <laughs> Ian just took an extremely high-powered laser pointer at the TV. And it, it went directly into off. my eyes. Dude, what the fuck? I was like, Ian, be very careful with this laser pointer. This thing is actually illegal to possess. It's so powerful. There are casualties in these beefs. Wow. You know, Who would have expected it was me to be the first one down? So things seemed to quiet down for a bit. You know, everyone seemed to be like, it's cool. Do you still have vision? Are you okay? I'm seeing, I'm not going to lie. I'm seeing, I'm seeing You're a seeing dot. You're seeing a green dot? Yeah, I'm seeing a dot. But go ahead. Don't, don't let me interrupt you. Hmm. Okay, Pusha T drops, Exodus 23-1, the diss track that shakes things up. <laughs> <laughs> he attacks Lil Wayne, Birdman. He's upset. Things are looking dicey. Now, what caused this? Over the babe situation. Oh, I thought it cooled Just down. It babe. cooled down for a bit, and then he came back a little later. I have to say, he... So, let me get this straight. Pusha T was upset that they were wearing babe. Yeah. I have to say, point against your boy Pusha, because that's some petty-ass shit. It is, but then Lil Wayne, in that interview, says, you know, who is he? I don't give a shit about him. Right. You know, he's, mm -hmm. he's not me. And that, that set him off. Worse. And that did make it worse. But, and I mean, okay. So, Pusha T attacks... What's the ick? That's his catchphrase. Can you get a sample of that? Do we have? Let's see if I can track down that. But, yeah. I'm sure you can get a couple X. Okay. So, Birdman and Lil Wayne are on Young Money Entertainment and Cash Money Records. Mm -hmm. The next slide, Dan, real quick. Drake is signed to both Young Money and Cash Money. Oh wow. shit! Those are his guys. Didn't take very long for Lil Wayne to respond. In the next one. It's a very small text there you got. Fuck Pusha T and anybody that love him. Lil Wayne is not happy. Lil Wayne has a lot of weight in his words, right? Like, how did people respond to this tweet? This is from 2012. We are really going way back. Yes. Damn, you, I have to say, I even underestimated you. <laughs> Knowing that you're the keeper of culture and knowledge, you have going back to 2012 on my ass. Impressed. There's a lot. There's a lot to unpack. Did you have here. to do research? You put did this you know together this? just since last night. Yes. Did he put this together in like an hour off the top of his head? Like, off the top of your head, or did you supplement? Well, research? actually, I kind of I have slideshows just for <laughs> you had them queued any up scenario. Right. There you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Lil Wayne and Drake are really close. Uh, Lil Wayne's pissed off. Drake is mad. He wants to defend his mentor, who is Lil Wayne. You could skip it. He's you know it's just some just some information, some stuff. 
Uh, I'm just as famous as my mentor, but that's still the boss. Don't get what is what is we don't need to read all this. This is Drake kind of sending the little shots okay. on his 2012 song. I'm as famous as my mentor. He's talking about Lil Wayne. Mm. That's still the boss. Get hype on tracks and jump in front of a bullet you weren't meant for. Mm. So he's kind of going push a T, leave Lil Wayne alone. Right. Mm. You don't want to mess with me. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. So then things cool off until 2015. Just fast forward. 2015. Fast forward, jumping up. Meek Mill, I won't use the laser pointer. I almost did. <laughs> Please don't. I Wait, was very did you do this specific Photoshop? No, I found it. I stole it. I was going to compliment you. <laughs> yeah. Did you find it on the Kanye? I'll take the compliment. Did you, did you find it on the Kanye <laughs> fan site? No, I can't go back there. I can't go back. <laughs> now, let me tell I'm going to ask. When you go to the website, is it just straight blocked out? Or are you can or it doesn't allow you to log in? Can you view other people's? I can posts? view it. Yeah, okay. they let you give a taste. Have you tried a VPN? Uh, yes. And they found out they and banned found you. Out. Yeah. That is fucking. If bad, I could make bro. like a plea, will you guys let me back? <laughs> now, are you kidding, or is it really that important to you? Well, I mean, it's like album time. There's a lot of discussion. Mm. I, I can't get in on it. But you can read it, but you can't participate. Is that really a big deal for you? I've got insights. I've got. Right. Stuff to say. I've got PowerPoints. Right. How how many <laughs> and I want to know specifically how many hours a week do you spend on that website before you were banned? I don't know if I want to think about that information. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> I got to say you're interesting. You're an enigma, you know. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm mesmerized by that guy. So, and Fair I know enough. a lot about him, but right. anyways, I want to know what your is your form name something interesting? Is it something that would make me laugh? No. It's just some random stuff. Yeah, okay. just random. Okay. Would you tell me if it was? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, let's continue. <laughs> okay, so Meek Mill comes in. You guys may have heard of this back in the day. Meek Mill tweets this out. Stop comparing Drake to me. He don't write his own raps. Ouch. That's why he ain't tweet my album because we found out. Wow, so, big Meek, shots fired. He exposes Drake, says he uses ghostwriters. Can I point something out yes. that I find interesting? Mm-hmm. More retweets than likes. I find that to be bizarre. That was also the case with the little Wayne tweet. There was more retweets than likes. How do you likes. explain that? That to me says bots, if I'm being honest. Because who who would retweet this and not like it? I find that very bizarre. More people would like than not retweet, than retweet. Am I wrong? I, I think so. Unless there's people who are trying to, like, stir the pot as well. I'm just gonna sh- oh, spread this. Oh, so maybe they're, like, maybe they're supporters of Drake, and they're like, I want everyone mm-hmm. to see this mm-hmm. idiot, yeah. but yeah. I don't like yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I want to okay. make sure. It's controversial, therefore yeah. more retweets could possibly be justified. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. So Meek Mill accuses Drake of having a ghostwriter by the name of Quentin Miller hmm. on his 2015 track, Rico. Hmm. And uh, now, can, can you tell me the backstory on ghostwriting? That's frowned upon in the hip hop world. Yeah, why which, is that? Which is strange because most most musicians use writers. Right. I'll, sure, but for, for some reason, hip hop kind of has this thing where that is very, very frowned upon. Right, but they all still do it. You, you think know. that a lot of them I do feel it like and they, they don't all say it. do. Like, no, well, I think I don't know. I've heard stories of like you go into Dre's office or you go to Kendrick or some big boy calls you in and they make you call, write their lyrics in front of you on the spot so they know that it mm-hmm. wasn't ghost written by somebody. I think part of it, if I'm understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, as the keeper of culture <laughs> and knowledge, is that um, it's poetry, it's personal, it's your own expressive art, yeah. and so. It, it is a little elitist, I have to say, when you're making music, but I, I suppose that's where it comes from, right? Yeah. And, al- and also in a world where they're all like, I'm better than you. You can't really say, oh, I'm better than you when other people are making it for you, right? Maybe that's something to do with it. That's the thing. No one's really going like, who are the top five pop artists? Mm. But it's always the debate of who's the best rapper, who's yeah, the sure. best. Yeah. So, yeah, they like that person personality shining through. So It's very frowned upon. Yeah. Uh, next. So, through a whirlwind of memes and the release of the Grammy-nominated diss track Back to Back, Meek was defeated by the almighty Drake. He was, you just crowned him victor. Yeah, uh, everyone kind of did. Whirlwind of memes and releases, so, uh, do you have more detail? I'm actually quite curious about that. I think Drake kind of won that beef because of the memes. He had the power of memes but behind he, him. So the people won that battle for him. I think. Were you participating well, in that battle? No, I, I was a bystander. You were a bystander. Yes. Were you interested at the time? 
Vaguely, yeah, I was okay. interested. You weren't on forums or anything like that. I wasn't around. Okay, but right. I was. Well, Kanye's Kanye is not involved. Kanye's so yeah. just watching. He's in this new one, so I'm I'm very <laughs> right, included. Sure, sure. But no, and then the song was good. The diss song he released against Meek Mill was very good. Mm. Um, however, Pandora's box had been opened regarding mm. the ghostwriting allegations. <laughs> uh, Pusha T did not forget. Sure. So, Who would? Yeah. You, you we, can't. It's already been stained on his name. Cut to 2016. Right. Pusha T releases the song HGTV Freestyle with the following lyrics. It's too far gone when the realist ain't real. And next, with each of these lines, Dan, the slide. Drake has a project called So Far Gone. Wow. I walk amongst the clouds so your ceilings ain't real. That they think that's a reference to Drake's interesting album. Nothing was the same. These blank and words Call of Duty because their killings ain't real with the questionable pen, so the feeling ain't real. Mm. So people think he's pretty obviously calling out. Drake What's your here. opinion when you sing Kanye songs? Do you say the N word when you're at your by yourself at home? No, definitely not. What do you what do you not skip it or do you say and how do you approach this when you're singing by yourself in the shower? What do you say? I I take a moment to pause and reflect. Seriously, what do you do? <laughs> it's such a dicey thing. I mean... You're in the shower by yourself. There's not even anybody home. You're singing the lyrics to a Kanye song that you love, you know, every word. Do you, what do you do when the Edward comes up? <laughs> See, that's the thing is because everyone says it. That you say it. Everyone you knows say it. they say it. Because it's like you get you a... It. You have a cadence. Let it be known. <laughs> I agree, by the way. You're singing, you're by yourself. What can you do? You get impassioned. I'm just curious. I'm glad. Thank you for being honest. Do you? No, me? No. No, no, of course not. <laughs> Never. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, next slide, Dan, please. Let's get... get. <laughs> what the fuck is that? That's just dr crying, Drake. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, two weeks later, Drake replies on his song, Two Birds, One Stone, questioning the legit legitimacy of Pusha T's drug dealing past. Pusha T is always rapping about how he sells cocaine. Okay. That's his thing. Drake is, yeah. He's not happy about the disses thrown his way, the accusations. Yeah, he's he's getting kind of annoyed of everyone saying he writes. Are we, are we milking this? Is this going too long? I'm actually interested. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued. Are you you, you want to kick me out? Has everybody stopped watching by now? I'm actually <laughs> in deep. Views, views are views up. Are from when the you views are up. So, yeah, play, yeah. The, play the stinger. <laughs> play the stinger. Thank you. Thank oh. you. Drake replies. <laughs> Really, it's you with the drug stories. That's got to stop, though. You made a couple of chops. Now you think you're Chapo. Mm. If you ask me, though, you ain't lining the trunk with kilos. You bagging weed, watching Pacino with all your N blank. words. N words. Like this is what we need to be on, but you never went live. You're a middleman in this. You're not one of those guys. Wow. So he's saying all of the stuff. You're not hard. Yeah. Everything you rap about is is fake. Sure. Uh. He also attacks Kid Cudi on the song, who also brought up his ghostwriting allegations on Twitter. Uh, okay, so so Drake is attacking Pusha T for being affiliated with Kid Cudi, who's been alleged to have uh, to have uh, ghostwriters as well. No, Kid Cudi called out Drake for having ghostwriters. Oh, everybody's oh, okay. piling on Drake. Yeah, and Pusha T oh. and Kid Cudi are, are close. They're, they're interesting. So Drake kind of goes. You were the man on the moon, now you're going through your phases. You stay zanned and perked up, so when reality sets in, you don't have to face it. Look what happens as soon as you talk to me crazy. <coughs> is you crazy? That's a that's a strong... Those are, those are pretty strong words to accuse a man of being a drug addict. And that's right before that, with the next slide, Dan. Um, Cuddy had recently checked into a rehabilitation wow. clinic for substance abuse and suicidal tendencies that's at That's pretty mean-spirited. Now, was his words before or after the check-in? Uh, I think it was after. Okay, so that's so that's putting salt in the wound there. Yeah. Cuddy is in a rehab at the time, and he tweeted this, 
at Drake. Say it to my face, pussy. You think mm. it's a game? I want to see you say it to my face. I'll be out soon. Whoa, that's I didn't realize. Okay, this is interesting now. <laughs> this is actually heating up quite a bit. It We're only 16 deep. slides in. So. Let me ask you, what kind of guy do you think Drake is? Do you think that he's misunderstood? Because this is quite this is mean, and I see C- Cuddy is taking it really very personal. Well, that was the thing which I wanted to include this because so many people are going. Drake is getting attacked too hard right now, mm. and I'm like, if he you, had it coming, kind of. If didn't you he? go back a little, he called out Kid Cuddy who. Couldn't respond. He was in a rehab clinic mm. at uh, for, the time. For suicidal tendencies of all things. You yeah. need tenderness and understanding at that point. Yeah. And in his lines, he's like, you talk to me crazy. Are you crazy? Right. And and people kind of call You know, my out. first reaction to the Pusha T this was that, wow, maybe he went too far. <clears throat> yeah. Or not. Maybe it was one of my reactions. But this is, the whole context is fascinating. Yeah. Let's proceed. Yeah. So after this, Pusha T drops a bombshell. Daytona, the seven-track Coke rap home run album of the year contender. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it a con- well? We know that the year is over, so album of the year is it no. A- this came out last week. <laughs> oh, so this is wait. A- we're 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 up. We to jumped. There we're was a quiet date. period. Yes, and on this one, Kanye produced it. Yes, he produced oh, right. every this song. Is the infamous picture. So this just happened. Yes, album of the year contender. I think so. Yes, in contention with Kanye's. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're... who's who's edging out right now. I mean, I haven't heard Kanye's album enough. Okay, let's yet. continue. So on this, this is what really got it kicked off. There's a track on there called Infrared, where Pusha T says it was written like Nas, but it came from Quentin, mm-hmm. his infamous ghostwriter, Quentin Miller. Do we know who Quentin Miller is? Yeah, he's a rapper from Toronto, and he, Drake's hometown. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he helped write a couple of Drake's songs um, from his 2015 album. And then after all this came out, he kind of disappeared. Drake dumped him mm. real quick after mm. this. You think Drake dumped him? Mm-hmm. But you, but allegedly he has more ghostwriters swooping in and helping him out. Yeah, I think people kind of think that is the case. Well, the accusation that is from Quentin then is is, bla- is blatantly false. Well, it's just, it's just uh, he's bringing back because Quentin's the only he's the most known name. So it's just saying you had a ghostwriter. Not, yeah, got it. Yeah, exactly. So this was. Uh, no more subliminal shots. This was a blatant swing at the champagne poppy six god himself. Right. Drake. Uh, Pusha also used the track to further attack Birdman and Lil Wayne. He calls them out by name in this song, who Drake is, you know, very close with. Sure. So the game was afoot. The game was afoot. (laughs) And we are getting close. We're almost all caught up here. This is exciting stuff, you guys. Are the numbers still going up, uh, Dan? (laughs) We're, we're about holding steady now, but we're, steady. we're doing okay. We're right. doing yeah. okay. Okay. I'm al- yeah, we're almost no out of lost, this. no lost viewers so <laughs> far. Ahead. Is everyone invaded? Is everybody in bated breath? Go ahead. In less than 24 hours after this song comes out, Drake fires back on the song "Duppy Freestyle." What's the significance of "Duppy"? Duppy is uh, it means ghost, and uh, I think like patois. Thing. What's patois? It's a ghost. It's like a, sl- a, a slang term for a slang term for ghost. So what is the significance? He's saying he's acknowledging. He's like that saying he's I'm writers. making you into a ghost. Okay, you're a ghost. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. Yeah, interesting. Um, so he releases this. He attacks Pusha T. He attacks. I see. Kanye actually, West. he wrote lobs projectiles. He lobs projectiles. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> he says, so if you rebuke me for working with someone else on a couple of verses. What do you really think of the <laughs> blank that's making your beats? I've done N word. Yeah. I've done things for him I thought he never would need. Father had to stretch his hands out and get it from me. I popped style for thirty hours, then let him repeat. So he's saying he wrote for Kanye, mm. which he did. He wrote lyrics for Kanye West. So uh there's a tweet there. Drake wrote for Kanye. Yeah. Interesting. And Kanye is Pusha T's boss. So he's essentially <coughs> so going. What's the difference between writing for someone, but and ghostwriting? And, and ghostwriting. Well, that's the thing is Kanye clearly acknowledged. He tweeted saying, "I want to thank my brother Drizzy for helping me on thirty hours and Father stretched my hands." Those mm. are the songs. Where ghostwriting is, you don't tell anyone because you mm. take the credit. Yeah. So in the okay. rap world, is it okay if you acknowledge people? It's fucked up when you don't acknowledge and you act as if it's your own work. Yeah, that's I mean, the distinction. Even if you have writers, though. 
people still kind of look down on that a little bit. So does does someone like Kanye get beef for a tweet like this? No, because because he's like a producer as well. Right. He produces a lot, and he's kind of the same as Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre has a lot of writers as well. Okay, but he. He does a lot of production. Sure. So people kind of forgive it. Mm. He's a jack of all trades. Yeah. Okay. So when you do that, they're kind of like, oh, okay, well. He's got know. a lot on his hands. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Interesting. So. So that happens. So this is a little more aspect of the drama that Kanye, who's on the other side of Drake now, was once thanking Drake for his input. Mm-hmm. And Drake mm-hmm. is using that against Pusha T. Yeah, because Drake also in this song mentions that he just was in Wyoming like a few weeks ago writing for Kanye. Interesting. For his new album, which came out today. Wow. So he's kind of pissed off because he's like, I keep helping you guys and your your guys are just attacking me all the time. So he's getting kind of fed up. I can tell it's boiling up. This is not this is not jokes. This is not like them just playing around. This seems to be real beef that these guys actually really hate each other, if I had to guess. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty much and then with the next slide Oh, some other lyrics, Please. you know, uh, <laughs> you know, it's going to be a cruel summer for you. I told Wayne and Birdman, I'll, I'm done him for you. Can I ask you, you have in parentheses Wayne and Birdman. You've substituted out and noted it properly. Yeah. Have you seen that correctly? To bring it back to, because I was mentioning them earlier, because he kind of, he says. He He's told, alluding to them, but you want yeah. it to be clear. So you, yeah. you've done us the favor of putting it in and properly annotating. I just wanted to acknowledge that. Yeah. I hope I'll get good marks at the end of all this. this. terrific. This is great. (laughs) Uh, We got an invoice coming to you, considering we just sold another 20 for you. So he sends them an invoice for uh, promotional assistance and career reviving. Mm, 100,000. 100,000. Is that a good deal? Kind of. That's not a bad deal. (laughs) Yeah, I think so. And there's some other lines. He calls out his drug dealing again. Go ahead, read it. I'm I'm intrigued. Don't, don't. (laughs) Let's hear it. He says, your brother said it was your cousin, then him, then you, so you don't rap what you did, you just rap what you knew. Got it. Pusha T's brother, was he's saying he was more involved in the business, and he's Pusha T was credit. just watching. Got it. Yeah. Um, and he's, yeah, he just keeps saying, you might have sold to college kids for Nike and Mercedes, but you act like you sold drugs for Escobar in the 80s. That's pretty brutal. Yeah. So that's a good line. Yeah, that's a good line. It's a it's a good song. So basically what's happened is these guys were kind of flirting with each other. But suddenly, you know, in, in, in Pusha T's recent album, he took a more overt shot. And as you say, the game was afoot <laughs> and that set Drake off. And now the gloves are off. And Jake is Drake is saying, you know what? Fuck this guy. I'm dedicating a song just to him. Yeah, they've been going back and forth for like six years now. So, so this wow. is it. Yeah, so on the next one... Is it a coincidence that both of them are dropping albums? No, I don't think so. You think that there's some uh, acknowledgement of each other and like, hey, this is good publicity for us? Yeah, they you think that they ever talk... Well, Drake already dropped his album. No, his album is forthcoming. His album comes out this month. Okay. But they both putting albums out this month. Do you Mm -hmm. find that that's not coincidental? Do you think that they talk on the phone behind the scenes? I don't think so. Some people think that... I don't think it's as explicit at that. But I think they're kind of like, okay, this is going to help me a little bit. With this sales. isn't a bad... But the thing is, when I heard Pusha T's, that to me... Well, that's coming up. But what that felt to me was like, these guys are not friends. They hate each other. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe Drake came into it with, okay, this will be a good little boost. Like the last one, he got... He was being more playful. Yeah. Push his teeth like, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. yeah. The last diss track, he got nominated for a Grammy for. So I think he was like, oh, okay, this will just be sure. some summer promo. Let's continue. So things are quiet for four days. People think it's a wrap and Drake has won again. That is until... But this, I got to say, Drake spent 24 hours. That's not a long time to be able to craft a song. Yeah. Did he have it ready to go? Well, people think the uh, review copies went out like five or six days earlier. So people think Drake had a copy. He was ready to go with huh. it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because he heard the diss song, and everyone's going, oh, he released a diss in 24 hours. That's But he knew. He had it for because, a few So days. now Pusha oh. T took four days to prepare his, which is actually impressive. Yeah. Where he, Drake doesn't really get credit for doing it in 24 hours. Well, I mean, he's he probably was still around like four or five days. Four or five days? Sa- okay. I think it was about the same time. Okay. 
So he drops this song, the story of Addy Don. This and is now the we're cover. Up, now we are fully up to date. Now. Yeah, and this is a picture that he dug up of Drake when he was younger. Um, in black. In blackface, and there's significance mm-hmm. to the clothing as well. Yeah, he's wearing kind of this. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's from a clothing brand that's supposed to be kind of uh, uh, like an artistic depiction, but just blatantly seen like this it does look very offensive let me say this before we get deep into the story of adidon when things really heat up let's throw it to a quick commercial break and we'll be (laughs) right back stay tuned y'all you know the stories about buddha are told wrong the truth is he was enlightened once he used the quip electric toothbrush and only until then that's right this is the toothbrush that Buddha was reincarnated with and he took up to heaven. It's that great. Let me tell you, I'm obsessed with oral hygiene and I hate shopping for toothbrushes because it's too firm, it's too soft, it's all wrong. You get an electric toothbrush that's good, it costs $200 and it's got a huge battery pack that fits in your garage. You have to charge it in your garage. Not this. This is a Quip electric toothbrush. It's incredible. If you push the button, it vibrates. Brush, brush, brush. It goes for how long? Two minutes? Two minutes. After one minute, it pulsates and reminds you, hey, idiot, brush the bottom. That part needs to be cleaned too. So you get a perfect clean brush just like your doctor doctor recommends. Or your mother. There's a little voice inside of here. It's your mom and your dentist that says, hey, switch it up (laughs) and let you know when you're done. Its bristles are soft and perfect and it gives me a perfect clean every time. I love this toothbrush. I can't endorse it enough. The best part about this toothbrush is that it just starts at 25 bucks. Go to getquip.com slash h3 right freaking now, and you'll get your first refill pack, which is this top part here. It just pops off, and every couple months you just put a new one on. Bob's your uncle. You get that first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. Listen. It's a game changer. It's really one of those perfect little inventions that's so brilliant. I'm saying, just give it a shot. You're going to love this thing. Um, that's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash h3. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash h3. Don't take it from me. Give it a shot. Ela, tell me about Quip. I love it. Look at this. D- brush once, transcend into uh, the afterlife and enlightenment. You're going to die, essentially. I'm... That's a bad way to phrase it. You're not gonna. Th- you're gonna think you died. How about that? Get quit. Thank you for sponsoring us. God bless America. I'm. Close the door. Hey, we're back. I had to pee. I had to run. Okay. Uh, real quick, we have a just an important update that happened during the break. There, uh, I received an email from a moderator of the Kanye uh, fan site who is oh. offering to unban Ian. Is so, this real? Yeah, this is real. I mean, no way. He could be trolling. I don't know, but somebody, somebody. Does he have any out. proof? Uh, well, he no, he didn't offer any proof. But, but this is kind of what you were hoping for. Yeah. Okay, let me ask this: Would you know his username if he said it? Do you know the mo- all the moderator's username? Uh, no, I don't think okay, so. Okay, okay. I mean, well, if you're try if it. you're still listening, moderator, uh, I I saw your email. Email again with some proof. And <laughs> yeah, we'll, let's get, uh, we'll some get proof. this going. But wouldn't that be a wonderful birthday uh, gift too? That'll be great. All right, where were we? The story of Adidon. So we've got Drake and blackface to uh, explain uh, explain the significance. How he's a black man. So what? So I mean, what's going on here? Yeah, I think there's maybe more nuance to it, but it's very kind of. People are having a very visceral reaction. <laughs> Obviously, it's like blackface. It really Never hits did. you there. Yeah, yeah but especially the said, way the photo is. He said that it's from a photo shoot that was about. Yeah. That right? Like I he, personally can't see any other reason why Drake, a person who's yeah. half black, would don blackface other than as some you know statement social about statement. about it. Yeah, yeah, sure. I agree. Yeah, and he does. I have the his explanation let's, is let's in here proceed. as well. Yeah, let's blast through this. Um, so he releases the story of Adidon. Uh, he attacks uh, Drake's father, his mother, Drake's best friend, uh, for having the disease MS. That's tough. That's not really something to criticize. Yeah. You MS having son of a gun. Yeah, the way he says it. Um, you have lines? Uh, yeah, his producer's name is 40. And he's like, he's hunched over like he's 80. 
Mm. Tick, tick, tick. Uh, that man is sick, sick, sick. And then he kind of mm. says, he's di- he's dying. Right. So. Uh, Shredder is pretty brutal. The tripod. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell are you doing, Shredder? <laughs> All right. Uh, he also reveals that Drake has a secret child with porn star Sophie Brousseau. And, really? Yeah. And uh, kind of says that Drake is a deadbeat dad. Mm. Uh, and someone dug up a tweet of hers where she said that. She said, you know, fuck Drake. He's a deadbeat dad. About his about the baby daddy. Yeah. Saying that, yeah, Drake isn't really involved. In wow. That, so. Uh, and that's... Trevor's like really moving Ian's Trevor, tripod you there. Chill, dude. <laughs> I'm shaking. Uh, and that's like the significance of the song title. Addy Don, Drake was supposed to release a line with Adidas called Addy Don. That's mm. the rumor. Mm. Uh, named after his son, and he was going to kind of reveal his son to the world. About his son. I find that a strange play, and I guess that's what he's his, tapping his, into, that his estranged son is being used as a marketing ploy in con- in conjunction with Adidas? His son's name is Adonis. Yeah. And Pusha T is basically saying that Drake's upcoming line, Addy Don, is kind of playfully named after his son. Mm. And Pusha T's like... You should give your son a better treatment than using him as like a marketing tool. Sure. Mm. And who knows if that's true, if he was going to do that, but... It's brutal either way to say. Because it's kind of ruined his Adidas brand. Sure. So when uh, when Adi Don comes out, everyone's going to associate it with, Mm. you know... Right. Okay. Anyways, and that brings us to now, Drake brought out the iPhone Notes app to try and explain himself and the attention behind the blackface photos. Yeah. And so he says... I know everyone is enjoying this. You, you, go, you go ahead and read it. <laughs> I know everyone is enjoying the circus, but I want to clarify this image in question. This was not from a clothing brand shoot or my music career. This picture is from 2007, a time in my life where I was an actor and I was working on a project that was about young black actors struggling to get roles, being stereotyped and typecast. The photos... Got it, got it, I got yeah. it. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I find, that, I find that a little bit questionable to attack a black man for going in blackface when he did it as part of a shoot to bring awareness to to the issue of black people having troubles getting jobs. Seems a little bit underhanded. I mean, that's what he says. That's but, what he says, but... But I can't imagine why why else would he do well, blackface a, as yeah. a black guy. But it is a great little diss. I mean, if he's looking to destroy the guy. So is that... Is that uh, yeah, that's it. That wraps it up. Yeah. So who's winning right now? In your, in your push it to you. Push it to you. Yeah. The last, the last one really put it over the top. <laughs> Once anyone opens the iPhone Notes app, it's <laughs> you it's, lost already. Yeah. Like you're already explaining the iPhone's Note app. No right one's now. ever used that to explain something good. Right. Sure. <laughs> so so basically, that alone has disqualified Drake from this round. <laughs> yeah, and Pusha T tweeted last night actually saying. That he hears Drake is offering a hundred grand for anyone who has dirt on Pusha T. That's pretty uh, desperate, eh? And Pusha T is like, you're not going to find skeletons that aren't there. Interesting. So, and so, do you think that Drake is going to fire back? Are you anticipating it? I think he will, but he's kind of running out of time, I guess. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, well, with that being said. Ian, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your thank culture. Thank you for I appreciate you me. coming out. Happy <laughs> birthday. Thank you. Uh, I can't ha- believe you put this together so fast. <laughs> yeah, like I said, this boy, he ain't right. <laughs> but we love you here, regardless of that, okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. All right. Whew. Well, I have to say, it was long. It went on a very long time. A lot of details. I was intrigued. I learned. A yeah, lot. I did feel like I was finally learning because I've seen it everywhere mm-hmm. lately, and I didn't know right anything about it. Right. Well, now we I don't all know, know how many people like follow the details. Right. Now we all know. <laughs> um, TV's worst makeover disaster. This clip is great. We're gonna watch this clip, and then we'll jump into the Skippy Kyle call. You guys could probably tell we're trying to produce this thing a little better, right? I don't know if it's working exactly, but we've got clips, we've got segments. We're trying to be more organized and mm-hmm. less loose. You know, I don't, I don't know how this is going, but we're trying. I think there's probably a happy medium between like being like super fucking prepared mm-hmm. and being more loose that we'll figure out. Yeah. But our intention is to, you know, we want to elevate the show. 
We're trying stuff out. Trying to spice it up. We're trying to spice it up here. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying it, you know. You ready for this cringe? So we've got here the uh, TV. Uh, let's go. I got to set this up. This is from one of these <laughs> reality shows. Yeah. Well, all these it's makeover like a, shows. It's like a home makeover. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> this shit is so funny. Like, I feel like almost everybody's always like, uh, it's okay. <laughs> right when you see it they like go into a tiny room and they like repaint it and they move the furniture and they turn a, yeah. a, a fireplace into a wall and they're like what do you think <laughs> it's like you can tell they're like oh, I love it <laughs> that's like it's okay in this case this is truly truly a disaster that this woman collects antiques and um, well let's just go ahead and watch it Dan roll it Shut up! Really loud. Is that better? No. Is it heavy? Yes. Good. Oh, Only seconds after finishing in Linda's room, disaster struck. The added weight of all those books proved too much for the freestanding shelves. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no. That is all our teapots. Oh no. I don't know, Andy. I think we just have to put our hands upon this one. <laughs> I don't believe this. Oh, no, I'm crying now. It's uh, the books. We shouldn't have put the books on. Oh. Well, I think you better go sit down and we'll better tidy this up. The combination of two days hard work Alrighty. and the shock of what had just happened. Uh, can you get a screen grab of when the shelves were hanging from the ceiling? Like, the, I have to say, <laughs> that was one of the most precarious things I've ever seen in my life. Bring it back. <coughs> Give me the, just go back to where they were hanging from the roof. There you go. What are these <laughs> tiny little strings? Yeah. Also, what kind of room is this where you just have a shelf hanging in the middle how, of the room? Like, how is no one going to bump into it? And It's just free swinging with the antiques. <laughs> you know? Um, I have to say that's one of the dumbest things I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. That's a tiny room. The door's right there. I mean, what the hell were you guys thinking? That's such a For horrible Christ's idea. Sake. A shelf is supposed to be against the wall. You optimize the space. A free, a free swinging shelf with antiques on it. I love that they said it broke within minutes too. <laughs> it's not like it even like lasted a day. Or, it's like they put it up immediately. I love. Down. They're like, you know what? The antiques aren't enough. Let's put all of her books on here as well. I think the book's done it. Man. It's a wonderful makeover. It's really almost, yeah, it's almost, I wonder, they should, they should have a show. I would watch the shit out of this called The Ultimate Home Makeover. And what they do is they come in and they fuck your house up. Oh, what was that show that, uh... <laughs> there was, well, that one was real. It was a show about how it's kind of like that, but they don't mean it to be. But what was they it? do like crazy room makeovers? Like they yeah. came into someone's house and converted it into like a, a Chuck E. Cheese kind of thing or like a <laughs> spaceship room, and it's just so fucking out just there. Just ruin your house. Yeah, they base, but like in my f world, <laughs> you come and you just put holes in the wall, and you like uh, you upholster all the furniture like hot pink. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. Put the sink so the water shoots out on the floor when you turn it on. And just get the reaction. <laughs> like, it's beautiful. We poured our souls into this. I hope you love it. It's very, I mean, this would, this is pretty this, much would fit would right fit into in. that show. <laughs> ultimate, <laughs> ultimate room makeovers. <coughs> I love how confident these guys are. Are you even qualified? <laughs> like, look at this guy in the red sweater acting like he's actually measuring and doing <laughs> something. Are you just some dude off the street? Do you have a license or qualifications of any kind? Couple strings, couple uh, two by fours. Forget about it. I told you guys about uh, when I worked on a home improvement reality show like a decade ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just a PA, and uh, at least in my, I don't know if this show was like this, but in my experience, they would shoot the contractor, like, you know, the guy in the red sweater, literally just doing what he's doing, like pretending like he's hooking something up. 
and then as soon as the cameras stop, they just make the PAs do all the work. So that's probably <laughs> right. that's so that's insane. Why. Yeah, it's crazy. The PAs who don't know anything about building, did they make no, you do I, that? Yeah, I didn't know shit. They would like have me laying concrete and like leveling things. Did they explain and, to you how to do it, or were yeah, they, they just give me like a brief little like, eh, you got it? Wow. They don't, they don't actually care about. <laughs> the did you ever quality. fuck anyone's house up? I didn't. Um, I, one, I remember there was an incident where another PA um, dragged this. Uh, it was like an appliance, uh, like a, a what do you call it, a dishwasher thing. Uh, just dragged it across a wooden floor and just annihilated. Oh. It. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't come back. Did that they was, ever fix it. the floor? Uh, yeah, they, the production had to pay for it. Yeah, oh, <laughs> fucking gold. They're like, you're fired. We expect more of our unpaid interns than that. <laughs> All right, up next we've got. The main dish. <laughs> Fireworks. We said to ourselves, hey, we've got a brilliant idea. Let's get the great minds together. We've got Skippy the Virgin, and we've got Kyle the Grandma Fucker. Mm -hmm. they're, almost, they're almost like the TLC boys. They are. We posted today a new video about a dude who has sex with his car. Or even, well, that's, you know, I'm not giving enough credit. He's in an intimate relationship. He loves the car. Mm -hmm. It's not just about sex. Yeah. It's about so much more. Sorry to him if I offended him. Um, I want. I really hope he reaches out. He probably one of would. my favorite things is we talk about these TLC <laughs> videos, and then and then out of the, you know, out of the woods comes these wonderful characters. So Skippy was on TLC. Yeah, he was the right? virgin and Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> so it's almost like the the learned the the learned boys. I'm trying to think of a good name for the for the for the gang we've got here. The great minds of TLC. So we said to ourselves, we have these great, larger-than-life personalities. Kyle, who's had sex with so many grandmas, who's literally broken vaginas in his time. We talked to him last night trying to set this up. He says, hey guys, I just got done fucking a 79-year-old. He sent us a picture of them together. <laughs> Skippy, who, who tapes his dates. Do we have footage of that, Dan? Ooh, we do. I, I don't think I have it queued up, though. Um, let me see. Skippy recently, he, go, he does this thing where he goes on dates and he films the whole thing. And let me tell you, folks, that is oh, not... I, I do have it. It actually. is not easy to sit this? there. You have some, like, a super cut of it? Yeah, it's just a All quick, right, let's it's take like a, a look. minute and a half. <laughs> yeah, let's take a look. The whole thing. Yeah. Hold on one sec. So Skippy the Virgin, who's a devout Mormon, he defines himself by his virginity, yet he waits for marriage. Good, and I have to say, Skippy... You're not getting any closer with videos like this. Let's watch. Uh, this is my date. Um, her name is Deanna. Hello. We are going to a, a comedy show. Comedy show. It's, in, I it's improv it. and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but they are all getting Skippy rape whistle, no sex for you bracelet, Skippy stickers. I don't even Standard. have these things. You don't. So this you is don't? What's, what's the wildest thing you would do for a contact bar? Would you kiss a guy for a Klondike bar? We're getting this Can you pause Klondike this? bar. Can you pause it? Klondike bar? I mean, Skippy, you're basically, <laughs> you're, you're approaching her for prostitution in exchange for all things a Klondike bar. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's one thing to get paid a thousand dollars to suck a guy's dick. It's a whole nother thing to do it for a Klondike bar. Hi, it Shredder. seems like they're having fun, though. You think so? Go back. Yeah. Look at her face. Well... We everything we saw up to this point was uh, before uh, yeah. the date, like on the way to the date. Um, right, <laughs> right here is where where it the attitude changes uh -huh. a little bit. Dan, can the... you go back ten seconds and everyone watch her face as he propositions her for a Klondike bar? Right here. You don't. What's uh, what's the wildest thing you would do for a Klondike bar? Would you kiss a guy for a Klondike bar? We're getting this woman a Klondike bar. She does not want that on that bar. Okay, things progress. When was the last, uh, how long since your last relationship? Over a year ago? How long is the longest relationship? You you had like a, a two to five year relationship, didn't you? Yeah, it's it's over it. Let's do it. I think I've had uh, technically three girlfriends and I've made out with, I want to say Look 49 yeah. is the... You made out with 49 girls? Yeah, that's the Hold thing on, that pause. I bought. That's a oh, lot. Oh, wow. No girls ever grabbed his dick? 49 makeouts? You never touched a tit? I guess that's not sex. 
Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry to sorry to pause. We thought about like people in relationships kiss the same person over and over again. It's like one person two thousand times as opposed to uh, two thousand people. Yeah, or forty nine people. You know, once. People ask me like, "Hey, Skippy, are you still a uh, virgin?" The are title you? of the video. Oh, yeah. Are you tonight? Big secret. I'm. Yeah. We didn't have sex. You were there. No you were. Sex. You were conscious for the whole. I shouldn't normally have to ask this, but can you uh, let people know I didn't roofie you once? On a scale of one to ten, uh, how do you think the date went? Good. W uh, do you think uh, another date is uh, a possibility? I think we should, uh, if we're let nothing else. Let the comments else. decide. Okay, we'll let right. the comments decide. Uh, that's so okay, that's Skippy. <laughs> nothing needs to be more said about this legend. <laughs> she was into it at first. It was a long fucking night. It was yeah. daytime. Yeah. They did something, and when they came back, she was just like, take me home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, well... All right, let's let's roll it. We've got we've so we we got them together. These two great minds this morning, mm -hmm. and I says, Kyle, you've got the knowledge, you've got the experience, and the and the fucking the old ladies is kind of an easy in too. So can you talk to Skippy? I want to get this guy some play. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, let me tell you, fireworks. <laughs> it started <laughs> one way. And it ended a whole nother way with them, <laughs> with Skippy actually <laughs> yelling <laughs> at Kyle. Unbelievable. What a treat. With that being said, let's, let's enjoy the show. I am on the phone with Skippy the Virgin and Kyle the Cougar Champ here. I thought that, you know, with the knowledge that Kyle the Cougar Champ has, he could really share and improve on Skippy's life. But before I get into that whole thing, I kind of just want to check in with everybody. Skippy, are you there? Yeah. Hi. Hey. Hey, Skippy, how are you? You guys have been, you know what? You guys have made my life uh, much more enjoyable and entertaining. Really? I deliver pizzas and I get, like, I've had experiences where I've shown up and they're like, wait, you're Skippy. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, can I get a photo? And I'm like, sure. Would <laughs> you like awesome. your pizza before or after the photo? Right. And are you getting more it's tips? Awesome. Are you getting more tips as a result of being associated with us? Yes. Yes. Because those good. people know that I live in mom's <laughs> basement and they know that That's I need it to, uh, the money if I'm ever going to move out. I'll have Dan uh, contact you about collecting our commission on that, but mm -hmm. we can deal with that. <laughs> we can deal with fair, that. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Um, Skippy, have you seen our new video? We covered one of your contemporaries, a TLC documentary about a young man that has sex with a car. Have, did you catch that? No, I uh, I avoid <laughs> I, I avoid that stuff. But yeah, are, is, no, is, so tell is, me about is, it. Is putting your dick? L let me ask you this: I are, can you have sex with a car? Is that something that your religion would allow? Because I know you're waiting for marriage, but are you allowed to put your dick in a tailpipe before marriage? <laughs> I. I think you could do that as long as it's consensual and, uh, but it's an inanimate, what am I talking about? Only consensual people would be, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's all inanimate good. Inanimate object, sure. I, Can you do yeah, me? I suppose. So your bishop's okay with that? Uh, yeah, I, I Can you, well, you know, I, I would still tell him that right, I sure. had done that. <laughs> of course, there, well, yeah, of course. I suppose you could Let do me ask that you. not tell. Yeah. Skippy, if you, can you, yeah. uh, before we check in with you next, can you check with your bishop and get his take if you are allowed to put your dick in a tailpipe? I'd like to follow up on that if possible. I would legitimately be super embarrassed to ask him that, so uh, probably that, that won't happen. But let's okay. just assume that uh, that's something that they leave up Skippy, to the if you, to decide. If you put your dick in a car's tailpipe, would you tell your bishop? Yeah, oh, of course I would. Of course. That, yeah, I would think course, that that means obviously. I have mental problems and I need uh, <laughs> psychological help. So, yeah. Right, sure. Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Okay. Um, Kyle. Cry for help is what it is. Kyle the Cougar Champ. Nice to have you here. God bless you. How have you been doing? Tell, update me. Yeah, just wow. Listen to what you guys are saying. Um, last night I was saying the 76 year old grandma sent you a picture of that um, when I was talking to one of your producers. Yeah, I saw a picture of her. She's. I saw <laughs> her and my reaction was like, damn, she's really old, Kyle. Like. <laughs> That's impressive. Oh, it was fun, actually. It was a lot of fun. When I got here, she just recently got a cane. She has a knee surgery um, later on this month. Kyle, is the cane turn cane. you on more or less? Like, how do you, does the cane enhance the sexual experience? <laughs> it does. That's so hot. But I'm wondering, like, okay, if he's getting recognized and whatnot, why isn't anyone fucking him at the door? Okay. Yeah. Sure. So, well, 
yeah. Okay. Let's let's go ahead and get right into it here. We, we we've got questions yeah. for all of ourselves, Kyle. Um, let's start there, Skippy. You don't have sex because you are waiting for marriage. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. It's not that I can't. It's that I want to wait until I get married. Now, Kyle, what why? Do, it's a religious thing. Why? Yeah, but Kyle. Okay. Um, Skippy, I thought that maybe. It's been a long no. time. We've checked in with you. It's been a minute, and there's been no progress, right? You don't have a girlfriend. In fact, we've seen a date that you went on. You recorded it. We're gonna. We've watched yeah. it before we went in. Personally, I don't. I thought it was entertaining, but I don't recommend that if you're actually trying to start our meaningful relationship. <laughs> but what I'm pitching to you is that Skippy, we haven't seen much progress, and I think that Kyle yeah. has a good pitch for you for dating older women. If I want to, I'll listen to the pitch. I will listen to the pitch okay. with an open mind. Okay, that's all we ask. Uh, I just have, I have built-in reservations, but I will try and uh, listen to his advice as openly as I can. Okay. Uh, I will say Aww. I will never try and have sex with a grandma. That uh, <laughs> sounds the reverse of what I want. I just, well, I don't Skippy, know hear just, him out. You don't know what you want. You just said you, you'd be open yeah. to putting your dick no, in a tailpipe. That's Skippy. Okay. Skippy, okay. do you do you know what's a GJ? A what? Skippy, do you know what the ecstasy that is a GJ? A GJ is when a grandma takes her dentures out and gums on your cock, Skippy. Don't tell me that doesn't fucking give you a semi chub right now. <laughs> oh my goodness sakes, that repulses me. That that is to me what my belly button link is to everyone else. Right. Okay. Well, Kyle, I wanted to ask you something, Kyle. Um, have you ever used a cane as a sex object or any of these kind of ass assisting walkers, dentures? Do you ever use that as, as, uh, as a sex toy? Yeah, I haven't been over a wheelchair before. I haven't been over a walker, but I think it's really cute that dude just said um, built-in reservation. But I think you you don't really have the, uh, the ground to stand on for options right now. I mean, this whole thing... This whole thing about waiting for marriage, man, look, dude, it's 2018. There is no God. And, um, you know, not trying something out before you buy it or right. wear it. Right. It's just, you're setting, your, you're setting yourself up for a ridiculous disappointment and failure. What do, how do you respond to that, Skippy? I would way rather uh, set myself up for that than to ever get a GJ. So, uh, <laughs> well, Skippy, I'm okay to be with fair. That. To be fair, you've if never. If my two ha options are die a virgin or get a GJ, I would die a virgin so fast that uh, I would be totally okay with that. Sk uh, if I'm understanding Skippy right, he is calling out your lifestyle, Kyle, and it, it's. <laughs> I mean, I I mean, I don't know that necessarily agree, but I mean, I'm wondering how you're going to respond. You know, I, I was debating whether or not I was even going to bring this up. That's why I didn't even email it to your producer when we were talking with like my actual thoughts on this. See, I really, I really don't want to call dude out, but I kind of think dude's a troll. I mean, and for, for for two reasons. Okay, because I mean, but for the reasons wow. I think that he is, I think he's, I think that he's not for the same reasons. I was looking at the um, the YouTube page. I was looking at the TV specials and whatnot. You know, dude has this little moment, just like I have my little moment. Same thing. You know, I fuck grandma, and she don't fuck at all. That's cool. That's that's our both of our little stick, whatever. Yeah. Um, yep. But I was looking, I was looking at the YouTube page, and. You know, I see dudes trying to get followers. I see the guys Twitter and whatnot. But then the reason I think he's not trolling is because none of it's monetized. So on one side you have, look at me, look at me, I'm a virgin. But on the other side you have, I'm not getting anything out of this. So I'm kind of like, like kind of confused as to what's going on here. Is it a really good act? But you're not, you're not getting compensation for it, so it probably isn't. So like, I'm not sure what side the surface falls on. I guess I'm a little bit confused. I don't understand your theory necessarily. You're saying that you think he's trolling because he's... I get, because he's not making money? Is that what you said? So, no, no, no. I, what, no, no, no what, what I'm saying, saying I'm not sure what side of the fence it falls on because, like, it's so look at me, look at me, I'm a virgin, but you're not being, you're not being monetized, so it's kind of, like, confusing as to what's going on here. R what's yeah. your theory, Kyle? I, I That's it, that. man. I, I, that, I got it. I, I see that in the comments sometimes from people also where they, where people are like, He's just playing a character. There's no way that this is uh, him. He's like saying that he's a virgin, and then he's probably, you know, like uh, using uh, the microcosm of notoriety that he gets to be able to uh, one person to quote one person to plow tons of chicks, right? Mm. Which is not what it is. And I understand people thinking that, 
but uh, my uh, counter to that would be like anyone that knows me, like yeah, I am good at three things in this life. I'm good at meeting celebrities up at Sundance. I am good at. Uh, you know what? Well, I I I'm, I, th- I'm, I think that I have one ultimate ahead. counter to your point there, Kyle. If I yeah. can butt in, he has a jar full of belly button lint. We actually yeah. have we have, I, I, a we have a we have a sample of that. So I I can't think of anything of of a more sincere evidence that a man has never put his dick inside of a vagina than that. <laughs> that may be possible, but I'm calling out. I'm calling out. Is it a sick? Is it something like? But you think he's playing it up? Practical. You think he's playing it up? Why? Why? Uh, that's this is an interesting point, Kyle raises, Skippy. Why is your whole identity, um, you know, defined as Skippy the Virgin? Why is that your whole identity? If you're not, wi- if you're waiting for marriage, why is it all about I'm mm-hmm. Skippy the Virgin? If you won't just like put your dick in the next hole you see, and you, and you would, and you, goal- you, you would dare to decline a G job. I, I, again, I find a G job as repulsive as you find my well, belly button. So link. you say. So there's. So yeah, no, I 100 percent say Kyle, that. Kyle, can like, you describe? Uh, G- uh, Kyle, can you briefly describe the ecstasy that is a G job to Skippy? <laughs> It's, well, no, I couldn't because I was going to say it was, it's kind of like sucking a pussy, but like it can move around and it can squeeze you more because it can have more pressure because you, you have a fucking mandible there instead of a fucking, you know, labia minora majora squeezing you and whatnot. Right. But Skippy, you wouldn't, you uh, don't have a point of preference. Skippy, how do you respond to that? Uh, there's a part of me that feels like uh, with, if this is what uh, my life has come to where. Uh, my virginity is looked at as the same as a guy who wants to have sex with grandma. There's something really wrong with how I've been doing things in my life. If that's what Skippy. virginity is compared to, like on a spectrum, if what at the one end is a G job and at the other end is virginity, uh, it's I, not I'm Skippy. Doing it's not vir- severely it, wrong. Skippy, it's not virginity. It's defining yourself as a virgin. Like, how do you co- reconcile that? Well, and even that? then, I would say that if the first TV show, uh, like, so the very first show I was on, a uh, reality show, uh, when I was 24, MTV uh, went town to town asking, what do you do on a Saturday night in your hometown? And I was on a super, super tiny MTV show that was one episode that ran once back when I was 24, right? Okay, and then the next uh, reality show, I was on, um, I was like older and a virgin, so that was what, uh, so you, that you, was the you, thing you that were was unique a, about me. You were identified as the virgin during one of your previous appearances, and it stuck. Mm-hmm. Now, Skippy, yeah. let me and ask you so, this. Have you ever, my uh, goal is Skippy, to be, yep. uh, can I ask you this? Have you ever used a flashlight or any uh, masturbatory toys to help aid, to make it feel like you're having sex? No, in fact, I didn't even uh, masturbate for the first time until I was 20. Six or twenty-seven. Describe that experience to me. I'm curious. How? What was that like after waiting that long? My first time masturbating. Yeah. Uh, Guilt-ridden and disgusted with myself that I hadn't waited <laughs> longer like others that I had known, and uh, and even when I was like, okay, it's natural. This is how you know, like uh, instead of having a uh, wet drink kind of thing. But there's still that part of me that is like, okay. A goal is still to get married so that I'm not having wet dreams. Not Skippy, having to, were you uh, do that kind of thing? Did you tell your bishop that you masturbated? What was his feedback? Uh, let's see. So I'm 40 now. I was 27 the first time I did. I know that I did uh, kind of thing because I know it's uh, something where the uh, where the underlying principle of it is that you're you know uh, you know. In the Bible, uh, he that looks on a woman to lust after her, you know, is uh, committing a sin in his heart kind of thing. So I get the reasoning behind it, and it's tough to uh, go. I mean, like, I went, like, five months uh, without doing that here a couple Skippy, months how ago f- and was really proud of myself. Let me ask you this, Skippy. If we bought you a yeah. fleshlight, would you use it? No, not even. Not why? Even. But why? You said you put your dick what's up a tailpipe. The, what's the difference? Yeah, what's the difference? You're willing to. You said you could put your dick in a tailpipe, but you can't use a flashlight. I'd like to hear your bishop I was explain that joking. one. Okay, okay. So I was joking about that because I thought that you guys were joking uh, also. Because we uh, never joke here, ever, uh, Skippy. Would I ever uh, put my dick in a tailpipe of a car? No, not once, not ever. Like uh, if we're being, if you're asking me a serious question. Um, the reason why I would never tell my bishop about that is because I would never do that kind of thing. I would Skippy. never have 
sex with inanimate objects. So okay. I thought you guys were kidding, and I thought you could tell that I was kidding with that too. Skippy, does that make sense? No, I, I we're on the same page. We're just we're we're we're, we're <laughs> okay. kidding. I know I know you would never do such a thing. But on the on the flip okay. side, I do think that if we sent you some kind of masturbatory toys, if you're already masturbating, I think it would be interesting feedback. I know, for example, they have flashlights that look like buttholes. You can even get weird with one of those. Would you use that? I mean, yeah, no, no, not. No. Hey, I'll take one. I, I'll take one. <laughs> Kyle, we need yeah, to get flashlights with gum. Give with mine a, to him. Yeah, we need to get flashlights with teethless gums. <laughs> that's a great idea uh, as far as I know those don't exist yet that's a fucking great idea <laughs> okay well I don't I don't feel that this conversation is going anywhere Skippy I have to say although I love you you're not very flexible you're not willing to help yourself if you I mean you I, I really want you to have sex Skippy I really want you to have sex hey, Ethan, you're trying- I have one question go ahead I have please. one question Ethan yeah. yeah um how's mom and can I smash uh, I really am so tempted to hang up on the guy right now because, uh, you're talking about my mom. So get the F, uh, the bleeper button ready. Fuck you, dude. And if I, that's disgusting. And, um, guys, at this point, I'm legitimately pissed off at you. If you're going to not tell him for saying that to me, okay. that's my mom. We're yeah, not talking yeah, yeah. about some generic grandma, right. dude. So yeah, fuck Kyle, you. Right. Kyle is, is his mom. And I do think that that's we should. That's way above right, the line, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's way. I, Kyle, it is his mom. It is his mother. I think that um, we should respect those boundaries. Mormons are very family friendly. You know, they they have units. Regardless, what yeah, he sure. has said that about your mom, man. I just thought it was funny. My bad. Right. <laughs> sure, I just yeah, it was you're funny. bad. Is it a problem, Skippy, if someone finds your mom attractive? Like, I, Kyle's attracted to older women. Like, if you had a really cute sister and I said, your sister's attractive, is that a problem for somebody to say to you? I mean, it's, you know what I mean? Like, Kyle, he, he's attracted to older women. Okay. I just worded it terribly. I worded it terribly. I could have said it a million other ways. But, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, um, I guess I would say, uh, put yourself in my shoes and what would you, I mean, like, if it's, uh, and I get that not everyone is the same, Skippy, but are people were, not allowed to be attracted to yeah. your mother? Are they not allowed to be attracted to your mother? Yeah, but just just put just put yourself in your Say shoes of if you heard someone talking about. Say it. Well, I can. Actually, I can. I can. I can. I can so. because you know I had, I had a TV piece come out and there's pictures of me and my mom, my ninth year old lady, and I went on Reddit and I went I saw the YouTube. There were ridiculous sexual comments about my mom. And you know what, ha ha, that's the funniest stuff I can do about it, but I'm not going to like get bent on shape. But then again, you're right, that's me, and that's just how I, I just let things roll off like that. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, what, what, I, what I said was fucked up, I said it probably the wrong way. Um, but, he said it the wrong way. Yeah, I, she's I, I, hot. I hope, yeah. he thinks your mom is hot. I, let's leave it at that. I think it's fine, he has no intention of having sex with her, Skippy. He thinks she's an attractive old lady, that's what he's into, and we can just leave it at that. Cool. Leaving right. it at that. I look forward to our next chat. You Me guys too. Me as well. Call anytime. Skippy, God bless you. Appreciate you, Kyle. Keep doing what you do. Skippy, keep not doing what you do, which which is <laughs> not you. having sex. Kyle the Cougar Chap, right. thank you so much for calling in and helping to contribute. Uh, you know, I feel like we've been through a lot. We kind of went through a lot. We started somewhere. We ended somewhere very different that I didn't expect. But it's all been good. We've thank covered a lot of ground. Thank you for apologizing, by the way. That's thank very, you for apologizing. That, I appreciate him. Yeah. I appreciate him doing that. That was very thank mature. Kyle. Yeah, no problem. That was really mature. I'm gonna right. like. I'm gonna get up and take a piss, and then I'm gonna go bang this grandma again. It's gonna be awesome. God bless. Like, I, like, I, she actually, she actually walked in while you were talking. I'm like, I'm busy, but I'm gonna go smash that right now. Smash that, but be careful with it, Kyle. I don't want any more broken pussies. All right. Okay. Have a good day, man. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you all so much. See you guys. Bye. Boy, that was crazy, huh? <laughs> We're going to roll to a commercial. We'll be right back to talk about that, as well as voice messages, news, and, of course, go to your room, Ethan. Right, Shredder? See you guys soon. <laughs> How? Thank you to Honey for sponsoring us. Millions of people are using Honey to save money while shopping online. And why wouldn't they? It's free, takes just two clicks to add to your browser, and saves you tons of money. It's ingenious. And one of my favorite things about Honey is how much better it makes shopping on Amazon. Let me give you an example. You install this cute little plugin. It's cute because it's so easy to install. Click, boom, it's there. While you shop online, 
It searches for coupons to get you the best deal. Ela, I know you're a coupon shopper. <laughs> I know you're opening trillions and trillions of different tabs. I used to do that. I used to be in deep into the coupon game, if I'm being honest. Because <laughs> you know they're out there. Like you're shopping on Macy's and you're like, Macy coupon code, save 50%. You never know. They're out there. What it does is it automatically does it for you at checkout. For example, check this out. Papa John's Pizza. Oh, I'm just getting a pie. All of a sudden, Honey's like, oh, oh, got him. Saved you five bucks. Mm -hmm. That's like... From 20? That's I'm just saying that's extra cheese and extra pepperoni. <laughs> right back onto the pie for you. Um, on Amazon, they also work amazing. They search 2 million sellers on Amazon and find you the lowest price. It even shows you the item's price has changed, so you can decide if you want to wait or buy it. If you do decide to wait, just add it to Honey's drop list, and it'll notify you when the price drops. Honey's got your back. You'll never overpay for anything on Amazon ever again. There's no reason not to add Honey to your browser today. It's free, takes just two clicks to install, and will make sure you always get the lowest price on Amazon. Add Honey to your browser for free. Write the flip now at joinhoney.com slash h3. That's joinhoney.com slash h3. It's free. It takes two clicks. I guarantee you're going to save money with this. I've saved billions. 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 Actually, a couple hundred bucks, not billions. But th no, there's no reason to exaggerate. You're going to save money. You're going to save pizza money. Guys, thank you to Honey. Grab that app. Appreciate y'all. Welcome back, everybody. I have to say, I was kind of surprised by how off the rails Skippy <laughs> blasted off. Because what what did Kyle say? He said... Uh, he was like, how old is your mom and can, can I, I smash? smash? <laughs> and Skippy went like Hulk. He saw red. I was kind of surprised by that, you know? Some people take this stuff very personally. Like, say anything you want, but don't talk about my mom. You know what's funny? It's, like, it's hood people yeah. and Skippy. <laughs> Hood people and Mormons. <laughs> and Israelis. But he, he, I like how he takes it as such an <laughs> obvious given that, like, what if he said it about your mom? You know what I mean? It's like, I'd be relatively fine with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, guys, I hope you enjoy that. Are you Team Skippy or are you Team Kyle? It really ended um, up in a versus moment there. But they worked yeah. it out. Kyle apologized. He was very polite. He could have doubled down. Right. But he, no, he, he, he cooled it off. Yeah. And Skip, at first I thought that Skippy was kidding when he was upset. No, he was not. I guess part of the reason was that his mom was like in the room. <laughs> right next, next to him, he yeah. He didn't want to like, Yeah. don't upset mom. Wait, did yeah. you say that? He yeah, did, he said, yeah. Oh, God. He was yeah. like, and especially when you're talking about someone that's really close to me right that's now, he wouldn't even invoke her him. name. Yeah. Mormon moms must be scary as hell. She probably still like Oof. slaps him with rulers and stuff. <laughs> that makes the whole thing so much worse. Why would he have his mom there for that call? It's Skippy, dude. You saw the video. He took his mom on dates and shit. <laughs> you know, we still have a little jar with his belly button. You left. carry it around with you everywhere. And, um, I'm just waiting for the right moment to... I think when we have a child, Ela, we can <laughs> pass that heirloom to them. <laughs> Cherish this, we'll say to him or her. In our will. Cherish this write. forever. Didn't we sell that off for charity? No, there was the big no, one. No, there was a little one. Oh, so okay. We uh, right, right, we right, right. we robbed yeah. Skippy of his lint vault. I kind of wonder what's he if he's replenished that now. Mm. Probably started a new one. Yeah, I wonder what's he up to. Well, anyway, um, thank you to Skippy and Kyle. I think they're both champs, and I love the beautiful minds that they have. The TLC heroes. Yeah, TLC heroes is really. I'm trying to think of a good name. I'm just seeing what catches. TLC <laughs> heroes is great. Um. All right, let's go to uh, voice messages, Dan. All right, stand by. Let's roll that bumper. Got a good goofer, I guess. A fun is poof or a splash. We're not taking your calls. We can take them all. It's the H3 voicemail. I don't like his voice. We got to get rid of that guy's voice. He's way too fucking happy. That's like the sound. That's the song that Jimmy Savelle hears in his head right as he Ooh, comes out of the uh, children's hospital. <laughs> Gotta get it that changed. Alright, what do we got here? Hey, what up, Ethan and uh Fila? It's your boy Nick over in the Sacramento area of California. I'm a parasitologist, so I work with a lot of poop. And uh with all the shit you guys talk about, it's good shit versus my bad shit, so it's nice listening to you on my on my graveyard shit. So keep up the good work. 
I uh, haven't seen any new moves lately, so it'd be a good idea to maybe get some nicer moves under your mm. belt. Like a dance Appreciate moves? Appreciate you. Mm. Have a great day. <laughs> Thanks for Thank sharing. Thank you. Glad to hear that uh, there's good shit out there. <laughs> I haven't worked on new... Well, I did have a move in... Uh, you gotta work on those moves, yeah. yeah. The new ones. The Roy Purdy's. <laughs> that shit's crazy. I'm too... <laughs> I tried doing that shit. You gotta be like... It's tough. Not fat, first of all. First and foremost. And there's like an age that goes with the dance. <laughs> right. You have to be a bright young man, kind of. Or chubby <laughs> little red shirt boy. If you want to transcend yes, the age... Go. Oh, sorry. I was saying, if you want to transcend the age gap oh. that goes with the dance, you're right. gonna need to work harder. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I don't know if I've got it in me, but I'm gonna give it my best to uh, transcend my moves. This is your friend. Your long-time confidant, your uh, podiatrist, uh, Dr. Rudy Johnson here. And I just want to let, just give you a heads up, like, it's time to stay away from the Roseanne bars and the <laughs> people like that. Not because we need to keep people separate, but because they're going to destroy your career and tweeting like that's a bad idea. So uh, don't do that, okay? All right, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, thank you to my podiatrist for the uh, very sage advice on that one. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thanks for stopping in. Thank you. <laughs> hey, um, Ian from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And I just had to say, I can easily replace your other Ian. And I will bring you. Close. <laughs> Sorry, he's irreplaceable. Do you see what he just sat here and did? I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and listen can to that Can you shit. put that PowerPoint presentation in one hour? Are you freaking kidding me? In the battles of the Ians, no one will ever defeat him. I hope you're listening, Ian. You know, there's this movie with Chun, uh, Chow Yun Fat, where he has to go in parallel universes and kill all of the other versions of him so he gets stronger. You know what I'm talking about? Dan? I don't. Yeah, I I'm going to look up what that's what the <laughs> yeah, fuck is going on. And in this world, Ian is rushing you. Okay. All other Ians, I invite you to challenge our Ian. Ian's like my Pokemon, he's like my star Pokemon. I dare anybody to step to me with a better Ian. <laughs> I'll throw down my Ian and they can battle. Is that, a, is that Bulletproof Monk? No, no, no. No? no, no. Okay. Give me a break. Bulletproof Monk. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> All right, let's, let's move on. Hey, I'm Cameron from Central Missouri calling in regards to... What happened what to you, Cameron? podcast about like Amazon <laughs> and like the fake Sounds products so sad. and stuff like that. Just in regards to... It's not something that's solely on Amazon. Um... Walmart and Target are starting to experience the same problems as well with all really? the third parties kind of oh, getting he, slapped wait, on. Wait, I, think he, he I think he's talking about their online because Walmart and Target and all these other retailers are starting to have third party sellers on their website as well. Trying to compete with yeah. Which Amazon. is so stupid. If I go to Walmart, I don't want to buy. Like, you can't. <sighs> he's can't talking in regards to the fake Amazon. Fake product. Amazon, yeah. yeah. By the way, I was listening to that podcast, and I was really regretting not being here. What do you want to add? What do we miss? Just that I hate this, the the garbage that they're selling now. I stopped buying from them. It's immoral, honestly. I had I ended up returning like every everything I bought from them recently. It needs to be addressed. Like recently, we bought. I'm like, okay, I need a net for our pool to clean our pool, and I sort it by ratings and price because I know mm -hmm. there's so much shit. So I says, okay, I'm going to buy the most expensive one to avoid buying garbage. So I find one that's like 25 bucks, which is a lot for something like that. It's got five stars. I yeah. get it. Okay. It's such fucking garbage. It's in three pieces and you, you screw it together for Christ's sake. And it's yeah, like wobbly and, it, and unstable. It's wobbly. It's just falling apart. Like seriously. I don't know. Um, it needs to be addressed. It's a huge problem. The Amazon. I is bought God. I bought shelves that I was gonna put together. Remember? Uh. And I start to put it together, and it's a whole thing. And it's like heavy, and there's a lot of pieces. And once I start putting it together, the pieces don't actually fit over each other. Right. Because it's like cheap plastic, and they didn't do quality control or whatever. The pieces are supposed to fit, and they don't. Mm -hmm. And it's just like all the progress I did so far. Just there's nothing to do now. I had to undo it, pack it back together so I can return it, and then you gotta return this like heavy package. It's a nightmare. It became nobody's yeah. talking about this. This is a huge existential 
crisis. This is the one. This is the one, Dan. The one. The one. The Ian one is, the, is one. the one. And it's it's Jet Li, by the way. <laughs> Jet Li. Is why I couldn't bad. find it. Yeah, yeah. My bad. Uh, <laughs> this the plot of this movie is fucking off the wall, dude. He goes and killing alternate universe versions of himself, <laughs> but and they're all trying to kill him because when you kill an alternate Sounds version like of yourself, a Rick you become, and Morty. It, it really is. You become more powerful. So Ian is the one. <laughs> I hope you, I want to toss the gauntlet out there. All right, and what was this guy saying? Hey, it's a free shipping. Walmart and Target approve of this. So you should totally buy from this random <laughs> company selling on their site. Some companies like uh, Best Buy, like I, I work at Best Buy, uh, have a lot of issues with c- customers coming in demanding, like, give me this price on this product mm-hmm. at Amazon from Walmart. Right. But it's sold by those third parties where it's like you can't trust them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't know, just like the customers you guys talked about, where you don't know if it's the real product or it's a fake product just mm-hmm. that had the prime slot. He's on saying it. people come in for price matches on all this garbage, mm-hmm. third party shit. It's a mess. It's a whole mess. But it used to be on Amazon that if it was prime, you knew that this is like approved. That's what you think. Right? Yeah. That's what I always thought. That's what I always thought too, and I didn't have a problem up until like a year ago. Yeah, it, and, especially and it, recently, like the past few months, everything I bought right. from them was like broken. Even shit as shitty as like medicine, this is fake. Yeah, unbelievable. Somebody's got to talk about it, and if that person has to be me, it's, well, then I guess I'll be that hero. I'll be that real savior. Shame I'll be the one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I take it very seriously because I came here from Israel where you don't have Amazon. And here I was like, Amazon, this is like heaven. Mm-hmm. You can, it's it's amazing. Yeah. And now it's all <coughs> ruined. It's ruined. We're back in the dark ages. <laughs> this is. This now is we got to go shop at Home Depot. Speaking of the dark ages, we have one here about bidets. What up, poops? This is Tommy Wami from Seattle. Just wanted to spread the good word of the bidet. Hmm. Did you guys have one? Don't be afraid. The thing will clean your asshole. I, too, have a very, very hairy asshole. Mm. So uh, give it a try. Get one of the warm water ones. Spray straight in your asshole. It'll be uh, clean as a whistle. I have a bidet, and it is has warm water. I, I have never used it. it because I don't understand when you squirt it with the water, how do you clean? You have shitty water on your asshole. I'm supposed, I've been advised to use a wet towel. My brother a actually towel? really wanted to that? call in to explain. Okay, so here's what I propose. But he's not available right he's now. He's on a flight. Yeah. Your brother, he's a, he, he is an unbelievable proponent of the bidet. He thinks, though, even with the wet wipes, you're not as clean as you can get with a bidet, apparently. I'm not. Wow. I just don't understand the process <laughs> of drying your ass with shit in it. Like, I take shit. I don't I, know. That shit gets caked on, dude. Well, you're still supposed to use toilet paper in conjunction with the bidet? Or, Once or... it's wet, you can not use toilet paper. Or toilet paper first. Toilet then, paper first, then, then give it a squirt. A rinse down. Well, what I want to do is bring your brother in. He can. T- we can t- debate this. He can t- give me instructions. And then the following <laughs> week, I'll use it, and we'll come back and report it. Because I feel like the bidet, we need to get he to the actually, bottom of it. He actually, he wanted to call in, and he's got he's got notes already prepared. He's really? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I need to prepare. <laughs> Shit, I need notes. <laughs> you know what? I need to use, um... It's fucked up because your bathroom's the one with the bidet. We have two bathrooms, and I and now once I start loving the bidet, I can't that be going one. over shitting and running between bathrooms. You think I'll just use yours? I never thought it was mine anyway. It's it's a bathroom. Okay, I'm gonna shit in your bathroom. <laughs> you made it yours and mine. <laughs> what else we got? Are you ready to rock? rock this fucking rock, guy again? Rock, 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 what is it? Come on, Ethan. You gotta bring the '80s back. I'm banging in trains, I'm ripping mufflers off of trucks, I'm hanging those truck nuts, you know, down to my knees. You know what I mean? Because I'm fucking blind! Because I'm blind! Alright, thank you very much for that. I thought it was the, uh, hater. But it's just a 80s fan. Alright, let's bring it back. I'm right there with you, buddy. God bless hmm. you. Hey, uh, Ethan and Ella, love the show, just want to say. It's, uh, Jordan from, uh, Melbourne, Australia. Uh, not to be confused with the Jordan that frequently calls in. Sure. Just wanted to let you guys know, just uh, watch the previous podcast. I watch it while I work. I work for a major water company out here in uh, Geelong, down in the little, little uh, state of Victoria, um, down in Australia. Uh, and just uh, we have a ma- massive campaign going on right now where basically we just want to educate people and let people know that flushable wipes aren't actually flushable, uh, even though they're, they're advertised that way. 
Mm. So I thought I'd just bring that mm-hmm. up with you guys, seeing that I've been working for this company for a while now, and uh, it's pretty mm-hmm. pretty clear to everyone that works uh, in this industry that yeah, they're not actually flushable. Interesting. Um, also, just want to say how much I love the show. And oh, thank, um, you. thank you for telling me how much you love the show, but you can't you can't have it both ways. You can't be like, oh, crush your dreams, all the big fan <laughs> of the show. I'm gonna cut you off there. This whole thing with baby wipes, it's like all of a sudden I talk about baby wipes, and people are like. I've seen Siri. No, it's it's just happening now everywhere where people, people are, are waking up. Waking, yeah, because they're advertising right. it as flushable. Well, if, but it's okay, not. If, if flushable baby wipes are somehow like destroying the plumbing worldwide. They are. That's fucked up that these people are able to say, hey, flushable. Yeah. That's why it's becoming illegal. You know what I noticed <laughs> on these packages of these? Fl- yeah, maybe. Maybe it's time to start squirting water on my ass. just straight up false advertising is what I want. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of, well, what they say on the packaging is only only one, one at a time. I'm yeah. like, come on. You think I can clean up my asshole in one wipe? Get real. I'm flushing like eight at a time. Do you really? I don't. On a, on a real, <laughs> no, more, I, I would say three at most. I'll go one and I'll like conserve the space. I'll do like five wipes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then like, if I have to go in for the second one, it's like, all right. Usually I go in for the second one. If I have to go in for a third one, it's like, oof, this was a third one. Third is like, yeesh. But I usually wrap it up in three. I think, uh... I, I can't live get, without it now. I'm addicted a... to baby wipes. You don't understand. If I take a shit without baby wipes, it's, it's, you don't understand. I can't get my asshole clean. I'll bleed with toilet paper by the time it's clean. You don't understand. So I think you gotta throw it in the trash can. I don't like the, t- I gotta tell you. I don't like the idea of a bunch of shitty rags in the in a bin right next to me. But hey, sometimes you got to do. <laughs> do you know what? It, because the thing is, like, you've got your hand under there and you're wiping shit. And there's a real beautiful thing about just letting it go. <laughs> but when you have to do all this and then you bring it out, and you're confronted That's not with a what you've done. Problem for me. <laughs> you're confronted with what you've done, and then you have to n- do a whole new act of this. Uh... It's like. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to see the murder scene can't, can't again. Can't say I relate to that. I don't want to be confronted with my crimes. When you, when you wipe, you don't look at it. I look. Yeah. You look at it. Yeah. Do you look every wipe? Well, I don't know, but you, you got to check the progress. Right. <laughs> Certainly, at the end, you got to know. Right. So, what's the difference? Let me ask you, when are, when are you done wiping? When there's no poop left, or will you quit when there's a little poop left? Or do you wipe until it's all clean? No, usually there will be no poop. Nothing left. Unless you go in, how deep like do you go really, in? Like I'm sick or something. Right, if you have diarrhea, then yeah. you don't want to get too vigorous. But how deep do you go in when you're wiping? What do you mean deep? Like well, because where? there's certain <laughs> levels of deepness. Like, you can do a surface level clean, but sometimes you scoop in a little bit. For that ex- <laughs> no? No. What do you mean? <laughs> Sometimes you scoop. You don't know what I mean? No. <laughs> Does anyone out there know what I mean? Sometimes you scoop a little bit. No. No, you don't. Well, okay. Sometimes you can rub a little bit deeper. <laughs> All right. I guess I'll... Oh, I, I just saw... Uh, I just missed a call from your mom, Ethan, uh, but then she texts me, uh, you, you rinse with the bidet and dry with the toilet paper, is what she's saying. So that must be nice for her. My asshole's hairy. If wet toilet paper touches <laughs> my asshole, right it disintegrates now. and <laughs> sticks to my hair. All right, let's move. Well, on. we should try it. It's actually. I hear Dan talking. <laughs> yeah, to my mom I hear Dan. <laughs> um, my dad says, "Mom." <sighs> my mom wanted to call in about something. I was like, "Ah, eh, it's too off topic." My dad goes. What about how she lost her virginity? That's a funny story. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> no. So your mom just called and she's got strong opinions on this. I don't know if you. All right, let's take it. Put her through. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta dial her in on your uh, oh, okay. laptop. No, 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 that's too much. Okay. Next time we'll be ready. It sounds like we need a whole episode yeah. about this debate. We gotta I think bring this is going to be pretty lot. much the rest of 2018. There's a lot. To it's going to be. Yeah. We'll have to get. It's going to be like a full court case of like, <laughs> we're going to have plaintiff and defendant. We need to have representation. We have to have a degree. It's like both of your families. It seems like this is. Yeah. Well, no, but everybody agrees families. but me. Basically, it's just me against the world as usual. Well, I've, I haven't tried the bidet either. Never. 
I'm going to try it. I, we should try it before we start. It's you know, kind of a calling that we just moved and right. now we have it in yeah, our house. It is a calling. It's a calling. Um, here, here's, let's move hey, on. Hey, Ethan and Hilo, this is a Twitch thought here. Just calling in to get your thoughts on going from shit to shower. If that's hygienic and if you've ever done it, Ethan and Hila, if he's ever done shit to shower, how do you feel about it? <laughs> Shit to shower is pretty standard. Shit to shower. You take a shit, you take a shower. I wouldn't do that unless it was just like running down my leg because I got shit to do. Is he asking about like no wiping in between? That's a good question, but what I would guess is yes, no wiping. Well, if you're okay with that, I mean, isn't that just, isn't a shower just a giant bidet in a way? (laughs) Yeah, except that you're, no, it's not. It's not. (laughs) I would definitely I'm, wipe. I'm opposed to no wipe into the shower because you understand that. Well, it depends on the severity of your shit. <laughs> How severe was your shit? Is the shit running down your leg and you didn't even do give, do one courtesy wipe? Is there like a psycho scene where blood's down the drain with shit on the bottom of your shower? You left the question too open. Yeah, expand more. Okay, <laughs> what else we got? We're talking a little about. Hey, oops. JT from Los Angeles and Ethan and Ela. I only had a one question for you. When are you going to release the SoFlo Antonio song with Post Malone? Because that shit is straight fire. <laughs> SoFlo like Antonio. SoFlo like Antonio. Thank you. Uh, gosh, Austin is so fucking busy these days. He's been on tour. Ugh. Pretty much he's, since the live show, Yeah, right? he's been, cr- yeah, yeah, basically since the live show. You know he's playing we like 20,000, 30,000 seaters now? Yeah. Well, we're going to see him soon, hopefully, when he when he finishes. I had tour. a dream that we were hanging out with him. Really? I just remembered. <laughs> were we making so flow like Antonio? No. What were we doing? Honestly, I think he might be too big of a star to, to debase himself to doing, like, meme rap, but maybe not. We're honestly... I'll work on it. I'll try to make it happen, but <laughs> it's very unlikely. I'll say that. We need a ghostwriter to... Yeah, we need a, what was it, Quincy? <laughs> what was his name, Ian? Quincy Jones or whatever? Quentin. Quentin. Right. Quinn Miller. <laughs> Hi, Ethan and Neil. This is Mitch from uh, New York. Um, I was just listening to last week's podcast, and someone called in talking about how, you know, it's like Skippy and the Cougar Chance, you guys are making your own whack pack. And I thought that was really awesome. And, you know, you said you didn't want it to be whack pack because it'd be like, Obviously, it's Howard, so I couldn't help but think of the gaff pack. Gaff pack? <laughs> the gaff pack? Um, it's I like it. Good. It's It's not bad, but I like, I think we need to give credit to their beautiful minds. And I like the play in the TLC gang as well. The TLC heroes. TLC, the one heroes of TLC. But, but what if they're hey. not all? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like yeah. Joey Salins. Yeah. Maybe it could be like the learned man. Joey is part of the gaff pack in a way, <laughs> isn't he? He's yeah. definitely a gaff packer. All right, there's one left here. This is Josh from Iowa. I was hoping I'd catch you before the podcast. Just letting you know, uh, don't go to the office today. <laughs> All right, thank you, Josh. Appreciate that message. <laughs> Shit. It's a little too late. I wish somebody would have warned me before. In two hours too late. All um, right, well, thank you, everyone, for uh, calling in. If you have messages, uh, where, the, where where's the freaking number? You got it on the screen or something? For the voicemail box? Yeah, we could throw that up on screen. I, I dropped it into our uh, script earlier. It is... Where'd it go? We got some a- videos. 818-214-8504 if you want to leave a voicemail. Read it again. That's 818-214-8504. Like All right. Do it 10 more times. <laughs> That's don't 818. Please don't. <laughs> um... Someone... We got a couple videos. You want to go on to Ethan, go to your room? You want to just get on with it, or should I watch these videos? I have two. Why not? Let's just do what we got. We're mm-hmm. deep in now. This is the... Uh... It's been two hours already. Yeah, it's been two hours. This is the part... Of, this is my favorite part of the show, because there's no pressure, and it's just like, anyone who's listening now... Yeah. ...is in it for the long haul. I feel that, too. I wonder if we could ever feel that from the beginning. I know, because I feel like the first 30 minutes is always the most, like, rigid and tough. Yeah. But. I don't know if it's possible. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, going back to our how we had this show out, like, let, let, let's review how we, how we did this show. We started with Ian coming out. <coughs> Wait, that's not how we started. We started with the Tommy Wiseau thing, whatever. Just, like, housekeep. Ela's back. 
Apple versus Razer, it's like, what can you really do with that? I had a trouble, so I was like, is this interesting, you know what I mean? Like, is this meaty mm-hmm. enough? But sometimes you gotta open light. Mm-hmm. How do you hit the f- ground running with these podcasts? I don't know. Ryan Seacrest was great. You know what we should do, Ela? Maybe start it and watch our, like, the top cringe video of the week. <laughs> like, if we open with the Ryan Seacrest, that might be an interesting way to, like, lube up. You gotta lube up with some top cringe? Yeah, to grease up a little bit and then be like, mm-hmm. oh, Ela's back. Like, that's kind of a good idea, right? Yeah. Nice. I kind of like that. Hey, guys. Welcome to the podcast. Let's jump right to flip into it. <laughs> By the way, Ela's back. All right. Where was I? Just take two, the whole podcast. Go back to the top. <laughs> sure. Whoever's watching now clearly doesn't care. We could talk about anything at this point. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. Let's watch some bullshit. How many people are watching right now, Dan? 17,000. Wow. The that, loyalists. <laughs> the true... The true fans. There's nothing of value left here, my my uh, my doggies. <laughs> you know, we do have some guests coming in finally. We've been doing a lot of... T- Whoa. Next week, we've got Tom Segura. Nice. That's exciting. Yeah. I'm a fan of Tom. He's a funny, funny guy. That's... And then in... in, in, in uh, then what? the next Why week... Why don't I see it on my calendar ever? And then the week after that, we have, um... Actually, no, Tom is the week after that. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, and that's why I don't we're see it. We're still trying to book up uh, next week. Okay. Should say that you guys were going to be on... Monday, we'll right. be on Tiger Belly. Right. Yeah. Bobby Lee's. It's your boy, Bobby Lee. I'm excited. Love Sh- those guys. Check them out there. All right, let's get on with it. Jerk off video. Go ahead, Dan. <laughs> Julie Jerkoff. Forgive me, Kirkoff. <clears throat> Great. Awesome. But, like, imagine we started the show with that. <laughs> Everybody's like, that was a fucking terrific. I'm hooked. Instead of, like, oh, <laughs> Apple versus Razor. Everybody really fucking cares about this. But people, people care. People wanted to know what uh, the I, update with Ela because she was gone last week, you know? See, I don't know if it's more the psychological thing for us. We're not loose. We're not loose. I don't think it matters what we talk about. Sure. But maybe not. Um, no, there's there's probably something to that. Like, we talked about your update, but we didn't really get into the nitty-gritty. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot to talk about with your family. But we're like, oh, that's too much at the beginning. Yeah. You know, we're overthinking it. <laughs> People don't watch podcasts to get hooked, do they? Who cares? Or do they? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? How do we make this show better? <laughs> I've never watched a podcast, so I have no idea. Right. <laughs> Me either, clearly. That's why it's run like this. I just watched it for the first time, the last episode. Yeah. On my flight back, I wa- yeah. I listened to it for the first time. Was that weird for you to like see it? as It a was very party? weird. Yeah. She said it was I boring. Just, <laughs> I just Suck. felt like I wanted to Suck. respond to Ethan about stuff. It was weird to not be able to. And right, we should have we should have had you call in or something. Didn't we do that? No, last I was. Time? Uh, she was literally on an airplane. Oh no! When it was live, it's too late there. It's like right yeah. middle of the night. I was. But sleeping. I don't. I, it's a podcast, so it's like almost boring by nature. But I, I I personally want it to be more more active. I want it to. I don't. know. I'm trying to. I want to elevate it, but I don't know if I'm making a mistake. Maybe just let it be. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's. Are we trying too hard? I don't know. There's some people. Um, here's a comment in the chat just now. This is a long form podcast. I think it's good that it naturally builds. You set a tone that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My fear is that the first like 15 minutes are the most boring, and that sucks because that's when you want people to keep watching. But maybe that's normal with podcast. Is it? I don't know because I, I don't know that that maybe I don't know. I find like when I listen to Bill Burr's and and Rogan's and well Howard who not a podcast necessarily but I I'm always usually pretty hooked in on the first 15 minutes. Mhm. You know. By the way, anyone who complains about our ads listen to Joe Rogan. That guy reads ads for fucking days. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I like listening to him read ads because it's like interesting for me seeing how other people do it. It's it's crazy though. He gets in there for like fifteen minutes and just. I fucking... see people saying in the chat they don't need to be to get hooked. Like yeah, but is... these are the guys that lasted two hours into this <laughs> lame ass conversation. But that, that's most of everyone almost. I mean, we at most we had twenty thousand, and now we're at seventeen thousand. Yeah, it's the vast majority are sticking around. Right, but still, like, 
I'm talking about growth. Somebody turns it on, who's never listened to before, and we're like, a razor is a... Well, yeah. But it's it's going to be hard no matter what. <laughs> if you say it like that. <laughs> hey, razor is really crushing it, don't you think? <laughs> I'm figuring out. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm reading the chat to get some feedback, and this guy says, I disagree. I enjoyed the, ver- the very beginning of the podcast. Hmm. Um, okay. Thank you. Are you reading the ones that are like, well, I'm, but again. I it, mean, there's a, a lot a, of like nonsense a, comments, but. Everyone already closed it who was bored. You know what I mean? You're not looking at the at the bright side Eli, here. You, I never do. <laughs> I, I'm not a bright side guy. <laughs> well, anyway, my intention is to try to elevate this show. <laughs> we gotta. I think for my sake, I think I want to find a way to, for the beginning to snap. Like, imagine this. Play this again, Dan. Play this again. You open the video. Hey, welcome to H Street Podcast. <laughs> Julie Jerkoff. Forgive me, Kirkoff. <laughs> Amazing! Welcome, everybody, to the H3 Podcast! Got him. Got him. <laughs> who's, not, who's closing that? <laughs> Who? That's some top-tier content right there. <laughs> who's Shit. closing it? No commentary. Just... <laughs> <laughs> All right. We could just edit this one to just start right here. Like we right can. Now. We're on YouTube. Just... We can't edit it. Uh, we'll take it down. Re-upload. Probably get double the views. This guy is saying, "We're here because we love watching you guys." Thank you. I love you. you I could love to hear that. Sit around and eat macaroni for an hour for all we care. <coughs> That's what I want to hear. I don't want to <laughs> hear criticism. I don't want criticism. <laughs> I want to hear people who say, "You could literally just eat a bowl of cereal and scratch your asshole, and I'd watch." I like the bar being as low. <laughs> I don't know, but scratch your ass. Sure. Well, maybe that's interesting to, to someone. I don't know, but I like to hear that. Thank you. Appreciate that a lot. How did you get to jerk off from Kirkhoff? Kir- well, she's obviously got something else on her mind. <laughs> Julie <laughs> and Jerkoff. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Everyone in the crowd's like, "Ooh, Kirkhoff." Um, this person is saying, I think most of the growth comes from fans. My laptop's about to explode. Yeah. All right, that's the thing with the razor. I actually hear that from here. Why is that Jesus. so loud? I don't know. It's just, it's not doing it. <sighs> okay. Sorry, you know what? Basically, <laughs> he was saying that it, it's the growth comes from, like, fans telling fans, I guess. Or, <laughs> word or, or, or you know, word Yeah, mouth. I know. I appreciate it. I, I, listen, I, don't get me wrong. I love all you guys. I love all you mother at flipping effers. You guys are the greatest. You, come, you just want to do the best show you can. That's by, right. I just. By the I, way, right. oh, should we address the shipping on Teddy Fresh? Because someone was just asking about it. <laughs> I don't know if this uh, is the right no, medium. You can yeah. talk at this point. We could talk about anything. I don't give a shit. Nobody's listening. <laughs> what you want to talk about it? Go ahead. Just we had a lot of um, issues with the international shipping being Teddy Fresh high specifically on Teddy Fresh, and the reason is that we were trying a certain plugin that allows you to pay the customs ahead of time Mm -hmm. and so the shipping was including that Mm -hmm. but we realized it wasn't the best so we now we canceled it so now it's back to normal shipping prices yeah the the shipping on international was insane but we fixed it it's still expensive but that's out of our control that's just what it costs the benefit the international shipping's fucked because you don't understand that all these countries have all these different tariffs and duties and stuff Mm -hmm. so what the plugin did is it pre-charged you for duties so that so that it doesn't get held up if you're in canada for example or the uk and you order something from teddy fresh there's a there's a chance that they're going to hold it at the post office and make you come and pay a duty this this circumvented that which is helpful for some but honestly just ended up in a lot of people paying more money for no reason so Whatever. Yeah. We leave it up to chance. But if you were discouraged by the shipping price, then maybe check again. Maybe it's better now because <coughs> we did make some changes. Whew. We should maybe we should open with that. <laughs> what's the mo- news. What's the most welcome boring to opening the we can do? Podcast about shipping. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome. We've got an update about shipping for Teddy USPS. Fresh. Yes. Did you know that FedEx has given us a discount recently? <laughs> it's making me fall asleep. Anyway, I, I think those 15 minutes are crucial, and I want to find out. Because we're upping our production quality, 
as you guys can tell, or at least we're trying, I don't know if we are, but we're trying to be more organized, you know, have everything more put together. It's a lot of extra work. We've been here on these days now on the podcast. We're here since like, you know, yesterday we're working all day. We get here at 10 a.m. These guys are here earlier, been working all last night. I mean, we're here for hours and hours and hours. Like five, how many, how many of our backstage? Ian, Alex, Dan, Sarah, four, four backstage and me and Hila grinding. And I'm wondering, is it worth it? Like all this work we're putting in, like, God, are we working too hard? But I don't know. 15, first 15 minutes are crucial. I want to, mm-hmm. I want to find a way to, okay, whatever. Let me just fucking move on. Play the shit. What, are, what do we got next, Dan? People stealing stuff. Play that. People stealing stuff. Hold on, <laughs> it's <sorry>. the... <laughs> um... oh, I see it. I see it. Jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> that would have crushed. Our views would be at 40,000 right now. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, here we go. Go ahead. Is that yours? A little loud. Oh, you need some help? You know how to do it? Yeah, this is our stuff. This is yours? Yes. This is yours? No, <laughs> it is. This is all ours. Uh, all of it. The chairs, the back, it's all our stuff. My kids, yep, that's my kids. I'm sorry. Yeah. Shocking. <laughs> They just can't believe it. Who the fuck? Shocking. It's okay. We'll let it slide, but I'm glad I, I made it in time. No, I'm not making it slide. I'm oh. telling you. No. You, you, there's... No, you, no, step away from my shit. How about that? You know what? I will, and then I'm going to take that camera and put it in the grass. Are you going to like that? Ooh. All right, ladies. Step back. Oh, my God. <laughs> dude. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that took a dramatic turn. I have to say, and I like how it ends with the camera being slapped, and then it just ends. <laughs> There's some chutzpah. Like, is that really the the heist? Is that a heist moment to steal somebody's like beach canopy? Apparently, sell it for fifty bucks. Also, like, what what, what is the state of mind where? Somebody has this epic beach setup with a p- canopy and towels and boogie boards, and you're like, I'm gonna disassemble all of it and walk away. Like, that's not an easy operation. That's not grabbing a wallet at a, like somebody's shoe. Mm-hmm. Was it an honest mistake? <laughs> no way. Well, what kind of theft is that? What kind of mistake is this? <laughs> you walk into someone else's I stuff? can't wrap my head around trying to <laughs> s- disassemble and steal a beach canopy. Isn't it kind of a thing though that like um like and, older and his people bags. just start stealing? Like that it's kind of a You're quiet. Oh, my bad. I had turned it down for uh for that video. Yeah, isn't it a thing that uh you know like older people uh I haven't heard of such a thing. They, they, Is that a thing? Yeah. Like, older people steal? They steal a lot. <laughs> what? I'm looking forward to it. Like old. the elderly. Uh, I guess they weren't necessarily elderly. What's the theory? But... They needed they need some money, they don't get yeah, punished. Yeah, a lot of elderly people have money problems and everything and they also they just, just kind of have the adi- they don't they don't give a fuck anymore. I never yeah. heard that. Dan, are you theory? an ageist? <laughs> Sounds Imagine right. Imagine about a race. Let me let me pull up some statistics. I'm pretty sure this is this is actually Imagine a thing. Dan saying that about a race of people. They <laughs> yeah. have money problems and they just don't really give a it's fuck. Not a race thing. This, uh, this is an age thing though, so come at me. Come at me elderly. I'll take you all. Hey, is old people steal shit. Who knew? You know, people say when I'm old, I'm just going to take heroin and enjoy myself. Is that a real thing or or I think when, it's you know, not cuz like yeah, I don't think that 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 would really be enjoyable. Um, I used to think that I would be like, you know what, when I retire, I'm just going to play World of Warcraft. It's going to be beautiful. The thing is because that you don't enjoy the same stuff that you right. enjoyed when you were a kid. Yeah. When I was in college, I was playing, or like high school, I was playing EverQuest and World of Warcraft, like, you know, 12 hours a day. And that was my bliss. I have never enjoyed anything as much. I'm like, you know, when I retire, that's all I'm going to want to do, right? Mm. Now I'm afraid of that when I retire. Yeah. What is it that, like, when you're 20, in the prime years of your life, you can spend 15 hours playing World of Warcraft, but when you're 60 and you have nothing to do, you feel like you're wasting your life? Isn't that twisted? Why don't you tell us when you're 60? Okay. Report. 
I will check in then. Thank you, Evo. <laughs> I will be checking in for sure. So an update on that. It's it's not necessarily that um, that like most shoplifters are elderly or anything like that, but many people who have never committed crimes in their life start to do it when they're older. And the study that I'm seeing, I guess it has more to do with mental illness and Alzheimer's and things like that mm. is why it the rate kicks up at 60 plus. So that is a bit of an ageist thing. I mean, you're blaming old people for stealing, but it's actually just mental illness that's kind of twisted. Dude. It's ableist too, I know. It's, I'm all kind of ists. I gotta pee really bad. Um, okay, let's move it on. We have we have two more segments here. We got Ethan go to your room, and we've got Ela does the news. So let's let's bump it to Ethan go to your room. Okay, I'm gonna eat some crow here. <laughs> let's bump it. Go ahead and play the song. Ethan, go to your room. <laughs> All right, welcome everybody to the <laughs> new and greatest segment here on the H3 podcast, where I face the music. I say a lot of dumb shit here on the podcast over hours and hours of uh, open mic time. And a lot of the stuff, you know, you come out here, you say stuff, ends up not being right. Okay, fine. There's a couple of things I want to address the record on, okay? First of all, this one I I frankly feel bad about. This was egregious. This was very bad. So I'm going to clear that. I I need to make a correction on this one. Uh, do you have the clip up, Dan? Can you play the the original one about the London acid attacks? My statement. Yes, yeah, stand by. Let me uh, let me grab that real quick. By the way, someone suggested to start with the news. Maybe. Mm. <laughs> That's an interesting suggestion, but oh, you know what? <laughs> no, we don't have that clip. We have we have the clip for the other one, right? For Christ's sake! For the next one. That's the one that you had Ian make. Am well, I, wrong? I I wanted both. I don't, I don't think I have the other one. <laughs> All right. Well, what I said, what what we were talking about, uh, I had read an article that acid attacks were on the rise in London. Well, it was related to that dumb prank. You remember? Right. That? There was a young Arab man who was a YouTuber who got banned off YouTube yeah. for pretending to throw acid in people's faces. And I just, well, what I was saying is that acid attacks were on the rise in London. Apparently, it's a very common thing. And so he was kind of piggybacking off that, which was really fucked up. And I assumed, because he was a young era man, that it was scaring people more because there were, I thought the acid attacks were acts of racism. Mm-hmm. Or terror, sorry, terrorism. Um, I was dead wrong on that. And um, the truth of the matter, here I'll read this, statistics released by the London Metropolis Police and the BBC provide a breakdown of every recorded acid attack over a 15-year period by age, gender, ethnicity, borough, hate crime, and outcome. It's the fullest picture of the findings. So here we go. The suspects were 74% of the time... The suspect was male 74% of the time, and the victim was male 67% of the time. Just 6% of the suspects were Asian. I guess the, the assumption was that they were... Because you have these honor attacks mm. in the, uh, the Arab world or the Southeast Asian world where, or is it it's like in Pakistan or somewhere? It's like a Muslim thing. I'm probably making an idiot well, of myself. Well, you're supposed to correct now. Well, I asked making... them for what are the, I, uh... it. It happens in India, too, um, which is, you know, primarily Hindu. So it, it's, it's, it's cross-cultural, let's say, unfortunately. It's, the point it's is, thing. I can't come to Ethan's... Go Correction. to your room, Ethan, and then make... I can't do corrections on my corrections. <laughs> I'm counting on you guys to f- help me out here. What, what, what says uh, 6% Asian? What country are we talking about? India? Pakistan? Uh, uh, Asia, the continent, so I think all, all of it. All Pakistan, of it. Pakistan, Middle East. Middle East is in Asia. Uh, Middle East is Asia, yeah. Okay, all right. So I'm okay. The point being that it's not... Muslims primarily doing yeah. it in London, right? That's the point. So that the point, is the point. The point is that it's actually what's happening here is that there's gangs in London, biker gangs I read, who who are doing they're throwing acid in each other's face, some kind of retribution. And it's not terrorism or it's not, you know, Arabs or Pakistanis or anything like that. So I made a absolutely wrong conclusion on that one. So that was just my okay. bad. Okay. It does say a little something though. That I would assume that, you know. Well, yeah. T- to be fair, you lived with me in Israel for five years, and 
in is right. in Israel that is the reality usually when yeah. something there's some sort of an attack like that is right. it is usually terror right related and and that kind of stuff so yeah. I so, can see why you made that assumption but that that was a bad one I felt bad about that one and I want to correct the record the other one this one's a weird one I've been catching a lot of flack I've noticed for apparently sending out Nazi propaganda that's an interesting uh, accusation to level against me Specifically, I'd spoken about the bombing in Dresden. Oh, here, here's the clip. I can't hear it. <laughs> yeah, let me resize it. This is uh, super big for some reason. Here we go. I'm going to start it over. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on. Dead air. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> after World War II ended, like two days after the Nazis surrendered. Low quiet. The Allies went and bombed. Dresden was like a historic city in, Germ- in Germany, said to be one of the most beautiful cities that ever exist. And it was untouched by the war because it was just a civilian city. There was no military there. Right. Two days after the war ended, the Allies, England specifically, and I think America, they firebombed the whole fucking city just out of straight revenge. And they killed 300,000 civilians. Something like that. So anyway, basically I had said that. Now, the real story is that... We were um, talking here about the book, right? <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite books of all time is Slaughterhouse-Five, written by Kurt Vonnegut, where he details uh, in his novel being stuck in a meat locker in Dresden as the firebombs mm-hmm. are falling. And he comes out afterwards, and the and whole city wiped. is on fire. Everyone's dead. And the, and the Germans there are making him and other American prisoners of war literally shovel the corpses the bodies, of, yeah. of the families and the children and all these people that were just absolutely destroyed mm-hmm. during that bombing. Okay. So, I'm po- anyway, the truth is that um, apparently the German government issued some propaganda that estimated the figures of dead to be around 200,000, I guess, to better equate war crimes of the Nazis against the Allies. Death tolls have been estimated as high as 500,000. But a 2010 study commissioned by the city estimates that it was only 25,000. Now, the thing is, people are saying, like, I'm, I'm saying Nazi propaganda, but in Kurt Vonnegut's book, he says 135,000. You know, I spent a month in Germany. And I'm pretty sure when I was touring Hamburg, you know, in Hamburg in northern Germany, there's cathedrals that were bombed during the war that they left intact as mm. a reminder. Our tour guide there and the Germans were saying that the Allies were blowing up civilian cities and we left these cathedrals to remind us of what happened. Mm. And I'm pretty sure that the tour guide there had also told me about Dresden and the, it was this horrible crime against humanity. But it's in the book that I'm talking about. So it's kind of rich of them to be to accuse me of, like, fucking uh, talking about Nazi propaganda, for Christ's sake. <laughs> and this is just from 2010. I'm just quoting Vonnegut. But to correct the record, it was 25,000, not 135,000, or 300,000, or whatever I said. So uh, clearly the Nazis are on the rise, and they're really using me for, for reference here, so... I am not a Nazi, <laughs> and Kurt Vonnegut is my favorite author, and that's where that came from. <laughs> so that's it. Was that interesting? Nice. I feel like you just want to clear the air on those. It's good to say. You know what? The yeah. it is good to say, but sp- that that one doesn't bother me that much. I don't. I don't. I'm. I was wrong on it. I don't think anybody's taking that information and being like, the Allies were just as bad as the Nazis. That wasn't my <laughs> point. Now, I'm curious. I, I genuinely am curious. Um, what about the whole aspect of it being after the war was over? Um, that I'm unclear about. But I, 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 I was reading on Wikipedia the other night. They were saying the Americans who called the bombing were saying it was justified in retrospect. Because I guess what the way that I heard it told in Vonnegut was that it was just this. It was a, just a straight up revenge attack. Right. I, I'd always heard that, you know, um, it was criticized because it wasn't really it wasn't really a military target. And, yes. And it wasn't. Um, but I, I just looked it up really quick. And the war in Europe ended in May of 1945. And this bombing happened in February. So it was a few months before the war was technically over. So, I mean, it, it was still war. I guess it, it begs the question of, well, at, at any rate, it doesn't beg the question. I mean, 
25,000 people still died. I, I think it's an interesting lesson, by the way. But the whole thing that I found interesting about it I was, n- was not to equate Nazi crimes against allied crimes. First of all, you know, we've all seen in Vietnam that we're perfectly capable of committing horrible atrocities and World War II with Japanese internment camps. But I find I found the whole comparison interesting in that, like, when you fight the monster, you have to be careful not to become the monster yourself. Mm-hmm. 25,000 civilians got charred. Is that much better? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Never it's mind, it's still interesting, you know? Too, you know? It's like, yeah, let's or, not talk. How many people died in the, in the, you know, it's justified, sure, but, like, you know, fucking sake. There's, <laughs> there's like, a video of me talking about it, like, uh, this huge expose about, like, H2H3 talking about Nazi propaganda. It's like, dude, give me a fucking break. As a Jewish guy? They're saying that you're a Nazi? Oh. That, n- I don't think anyone actually thinks I'm a Nazi, but that, like, I'm a mouthpiece for propaganda. Anyway, I was wrong, okay? Whatever that does for you. But the, the acid attacks was definitely an awful mistake that uh, I sh- honestly should have corrected sooner. That was just fucking just flat out wrong. And with that being said, we just have the news left. All right. Um, Let's do the news. Am I seeing this right? Yeah, just the news. Go ahead, Ela. Do we have a news? Roll the bumper. Oh, we have a bumper. All right. Let's do it. I can't see it, but it sounded like a hoot. <laughs> Ela, you are all set up to go. All right. First story. Trump implements tariffs on Canada, Mexico, and EU. Wow. Honestly, that one, I have to say, I don't know much about it, so... Well, I'm sure it's complicated, but I also know that, you know, Canada and Mexico are like our close trade allies, so... Yeah. The, it, I, my feeling is it's not a good thing. Because they're going to retaliate, and it's just going to turn into a bunch of isolationism, which generally isn't a good thing, but I don't know. Yeah, I believe Canada's already announced that they're uh, they're hitting us back dollar hmm. for dollar, basically. Generally, when the world and the countries start shrinking into themselves, it's not a good thing. Mm-hmm. But, again, I don't know. I guess they think it's, uh, I don't know, it's supposed to help with the there's a trade deficit. Right. I don't know. Uh. What's next? Yeah. Next. A lot of enthusiasm for that story. Netflix. <laughs> Briefly, Netflix tops Disney as the biggest media company in the world. That's crazy. That That's is a big one. pretty nuts. Netflix um, surpassed Disney in market value Thursday, hitting a high market value of $156 billion. Hundred and fifty six billion. That's their value, the the dollar value of their company. It's their market um, cap, so it's it's their value on the stock market essentially. Mm. Hundred and twenty five million subscribers. That's yeah. almost half of the whole country of America. That's yeah. wow. They um the where's the oh yeah. They are now accounted for thirty six percent of all down stream internet traffic um and youtube is second at 15 percent wow twice as much as youtube yeah huh. over twice it's like massive i gotta That's say i don't spend that time that much time on netflix but we have it it's i have like, it but they're talking like about usage it. yeah well clearly people are using it yeah i find it harder and harder to use netflix if i'm being honest you know what i mean i i've What's enjoyed the beef with netflix I don't have a beef. I just have a hard problem. Find, I have like choice paralysis. Mm, like I go on I there that. and I'm like, I don't know what to watch. I have, a, I, have a, I find myself spending more time on Hulu, personally. It keeps changing. It's like one month you'll yeah. you're all of a sudden on Hulu. Yeah, I enjoy both though. I always feel like there's nothing to watch on all of them. Just straight up, <laughs> you're a tough cookie. Um, friends. Did you hear about the Spider-Man I have heard about story. the story. <laughs> What's the story? Dan, do we have the video? 
Yeah, let me cue that up. So there was a child hanging from a balcony. And, well, let's see it. Um. Oh, there's like Look at this guy. Dude, that kid's just dangling, man. I don't this clip. You can pause it. When I watched this clip, I wonder why didn't that guy yank him up? Because he had a hand on him. The guy in the balcony? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, I've seen that debated a lot. It's 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 kinda hard to Dan, you're quiet. Oh sorry, I turned it down for the video. Um yeah, it's kinda I think there's like a barrier there. So he's like afraid mm. that, you know, he doesn't want to like yeah, that's probably swing true. it around. Dude, I guess. that kid, I'm surprised the kid probably. has the strength to hold yeah, on. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Fuck. Well, either way, that guy is unbelievable hero, man. Yeah, so a now he's action. now he's called the Spider-Man mm-hmm. of the of the century and um they're going to give him citizenship cuz he's in- That's so dope. <laughs> Would that happen in America, do you think? <laughs> Somehow I don't think that would happen. Um, Do we even have the ability to be like, hey, you're a citizen, good job. <laughs> like, what's the legality of that? Either way, I love it. God bless the French. Um, the next story is about the televangelist who we talked about before. Mm-hmm. He, um, he had the whole story about him wanting a private jet. Yeah. And now he wants to upgrade the private jet. Sure, why, why wouldn't he? A new one. And he basically said that he wants his followers to pay for it. Right, of course. And it costs $54 million. Fair. And <laughs> his reasoning was that if Jesus was here, would he want to travel in, like, a shitty airplane with no room for the legs? Seriously? Yeah. That's serious? Yeah, it is. Is there and a quote and he said. Light? He said he'd be on an airplane preaching the gospel all over the world. What is he just um, talking down on the earth below him? <laughs> you know what I mean? Apparently it says here it's his fourth plane. Yeah. What a fucking dick. You know, <laughs> yeah, oh, wouldn't Jesus want to fly first class? It's like, bro, do you understand anything about Jesus? Four planes. So, he did clarify that... 54 million? You could yeah. feed so many people with that. Is that how much airplanes cost? That's a lot of money. Well, it's like the the craziest private jet you can buy. Right. It's not just like a sh- starter kit. No. Yeah. <laughs> and he did say that he's not keeping all four of them. He's good. Been, he passes them. So now he only has one currently so he, in his possession, but he wants to pass this one and get the <coughs> new one. Now it's like that, an iPhone. He wants the new iPhone. Right. That's now. That's that's a that's a man of God. <laughs> he's sharing the wealth. He's passing down. Who is he passing down the jets to? How do you get um, in a queue for that? Where was it? He said somewhere. I think it was other ministries. Oh, God bless. <laughs> God bless. Rhett, what, what's his name? Jesse Duplin. Dupes in his name, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Dupe you. <laughs> Duplin. Uh, Reverend Duplin, can I please... Oh, uh, Reverend there's, like a, there's also a video he made in response to the to the backlash that he got, if you can call it. You that. got the vid. Thank God. A sp- Friends, I guess you've noticed all Bro, the you media let, why that's everything been coming and all the gold? different things that's being said about me concerning this plane. Yeah. First thing I want to say this. They never started the story. His, I did. His teeth are so why? white. Because I wanted to be completely honest with all my partners so and friends like you who support and everywhere? love he's this like ministry the image all of a these fake years. religious person. I started it. They did not. How he's got, like, and I want Bible to be honest there? so you'd know that I've owned three planes. I don't have four planes right now. I don't have that's a fleet a of planes. Okay, I have thank one God. plane, sure. and I've had it for 12 years, this wow, one. Wow, that's a long and time. And we're giving this one away because <laughs> we're believing God for the 7X to come in. Now, what's so amazing about oh. this, I had a partner write me, and I think it's really wonderful, and I'd like to read what he said. He said, I'm a longtime follower and friend of your ministry. I'm disturbed by the huge volume of negative press you are getting, reporting you're trying to dupe followers and to buy you a new plane. I'm sure there's a lot more to the story. 
I'm not looking for a lengthy explanation, but can you help me figure out what to say to people who say you are doing wrong? That is a great, thank you for saying that. First thing first, I've never raised money for the plane. I put it in our magazine and said, believe God with me. It's a vast difference between believing God and asking for money. <laughs> now, it takes money to run anything. That's common sense. Sorry. But the believe Lord God told me many me. years yeah. ago, some people don't believe that when I say the Lord said it. So I, I'm going to say it because I believe it. He said, you don't need to raise money for this. This will just come. Now, I've raised money for a lot of other things, and there's nothing wrong with that because religious organizations do that. But this one, he said, this one will just come. Little did I realize that people would pick this story up. And, you know, when you start picking up a story, people start adding things to it, taking things away, things of that nature, and it gets all mixed up. It's because it's Let me just say it again. <laughs> this is coming. This is the truth here because I'm the one this that started This is the truth this. here, boy. First, I, I've always believed in you, and you've always believed in me. Many of you know that I preached to 106 million households in the United States of America. Our total outreach <coughs> of our ministry right, is 2.9 billion people. Get a load of this. This is the spitting image of like a fake ass religious person. Everything's gilded. He's got white, shiny yeah. ass teeth. Here, trying to defend his decision to buy a $50 million plane with congregation money. D uh, Preacher Duplin, can I please, can I get in line for that jet? By, can I get an amen for my jet? You know I, Jesus wouldn't walk the earth with a donkey. Yeah, he said that. He says, Jesus, you think Jesus would ride a donkey? No, he'd be first class. Yeah, that's basically what he said. That's not <laughs> the Jesus that I think I know, but I guess you're more in touch. He's like, actually, uh, many people hold Jesus to be a simple, humble guy. But truthfully, he fucks, he drinks, and you know he rides first class. <laughs> so that's why I do it. Jesus... Jesus had the new pair of Yeezys, let me tell you. <laughs> and he was all decked out in off-white and Gucci. So I'm going to be needing that 50 Jesus million. Wants. I'm going to need that 50 million to preach that good word, boy. Can I get an amen? Now, next up, PUBG is suing Fortnite for copyright. Sore loser, if you ask me. Um... We've talked about it before, but I guess now it's happening. So what are the details? What exactly so are they suing So what they're for? saying is that Fortnite didn't have the Battle Royale mode. Mm -hmm. Only until, like, they saw that PUBG was... Is that a violation of copyright? I honestly don't see how it could be, because it's... N PUBG didn't invent... <clears throat> but it's that broad that, of a right? lawsuit? Like, I mean... I mean, that's just, like, you can't... It's like trying to copyright reaction videos. Like yeah. What happened with the React Brothers? It's so pathetic. Guys, stop. Like, I don't think anyone will look at this and be like, you know what? Stop, dude. It's, you invented a genre. Cool. Sadly, but your game's they, not as good. Did they invent it? Well, no. Okay. So the mod, uh, Brendan Green was on our show. Yeah, yeah. He invented the Battle Royale format, as far as I understand, in his previous game. Mm. He invented it in a mod of a previous game. Then, he made a full game, PUBG, surround, uh, uh, about that mod. Mm -hmm. And then Blue Hole bought it, and they made PUBG together. But there were other Battle Royale games, no? I'm not 100% sure. He may have, inter he may have invented the genre, but I mean, what? Mm -hmm. you, you, what? Like half, I, like, uh, that's like saying, you know, Wolfenstein or Doom. Sonic is a ripoff of Mario. Like, who, like, yeah, like, <laughs> so, what? You know, Mario owns platform gamers. I don't know it was mm, the first 3D yeah. shooter. I think it was Wolfenstein. I don't know. But it's like saying, oh, Doom ripped this off. Yeah. It's the same company, it's, but your, your point stands. Right, sure, okay. I, I I specifically don't like this because it stands in the way of innovation. It's like, get, yeah. let the world move on. You know what I mean? Your competition should be run by who makes the best game. PUBG's uh, playership has been dropping off like steadily because listen the game it's 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 been static you guys don't make it better you guys don't I my ears bleed when I play it <laughs> I literally get hearing damage when I play it. it's not yeah. fun was he involved in the H1Z1 yes mm -hmm. that was his shit right that, that was, was his the mod, mod. It was the mod yeah. of that so right, that one right. was uh, the original so he inv so he invented it but when I, when but I, yeah, the problem is when you try to not allow anyone else to 
just the, curious, like, is there some, a more specific... Well, anyway, whatever. I, from I, what I, I, I understand, it. that is it. That is what the lawsuit is about. I, I don't like it. I really don't like it. Mm. By the way, the, the game is different enough. I've played both, you know. The mechanics of Fortnite is completely different than the mechanics of PUBG. They are two very different games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the whole building thing in Fortnite is, like, completely absent from PUBG. Yeah, the way that you play the two games are entirely different. It's just, I don't know, it's whack. What else we got? Next up is uh, in Ukraine. There was a fake death uh, that they staged. Basically, a Russian journalist was... Somehow they figured out that they put like a hit on him. And Russians they... put a hit on this Ukrainian journalist. I think he's actually Russian. He or was, he's an Ukraine exile. Ukraine faked the murder okay. of a journalist. So it's a Russian exile living in Ukraine that they were trying to kill. I right. think so. Yeah. Okay. And so they wanted him dead, and I guess he knew it. And then they decided that the best way to solve this whole situation was to fake his death. That's crazy. And then catch the... Basically, they put an, a hit on him. So <laughs> they faked his death, and then they asked the person who was going to kill him mm. to say that he did it. Mm. And once he said that, they would they would pay him, right? Because there was like a hit on him. Even though he didn't do it. He would pretend to to say that he was the guy who killed him. Mm -hmm. And once he was going to get the money, they had proof that there was someone that was willing to pay for his death. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Not really. Dan, do you want to explain it? Well, from what I understand, it's that, um, you know, they knew of this guy that had supposedly was offering money to kill this guy. And so one of the people oh, that he had offered money to betrayed him. He that that was the guy that like alerted this journalist to it and everything. And so he played along in this whole ruse. He he said, mm -hmm. "Yeah, oh, I killed the guy," and they announced it in the news. And the dude was they the hired was the dead. guy who was paying, who paid this fake assassin. Right. They they Got involved it. him in this plot, and so. Huh. How about that? Yeah, and then the guy came to pay up. He's like, "Hey, thanks for offering this guy. Here's here's a hundred grand or however much it was." They came and arrested Boom, him. Boom, got him. Sting, sting operation. That's crazy. That's some James Bond shit. Yeah, yeah. and well, but then he shows up in like a, a <laughs> but there's a video of it, right? Ah, oh, let me see that. You've got a video of him showing up from the dead the next yeah. day. That's crazy. No sound. Is there sound? There's no sound on this one because it's one of those stupid BBC okay. videos. I, I, I got the original sound. That guy's got the most Russian-looking face I've ever seen in my life, yeah. if I can say that. A little bit, yeah. Uh. No? I got vetoed on that, you <laughs> All right. This isn't very interesting without any sound. Um, cool. That's pretty wild. Right. That was hard to explain, but interesting. Snoop Dogg set a Guinness record for gin and juice. God bless. <laughs> They made the biggest uh, gin and juice drink. Snoop Dogg made the biggest gin and juice drink. Oh, we have got a video. Oh, that is, that is a big one. Snoop Dogg is giving us just another reason to love him. The 46-year-old rap legend helped create right, I don't the need to world. Hear this lady. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big ass gin and juice. What? They got a whole audience for this shit. <laughs> I can do that. I can get a big ass <laughs> glass and put a bunch of gin and juice in it. Call it together like twenty thousand. Sarah just people. pointed out his, the straw has a watermelon garnish, like an entire watermelon. That's dope. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh, they crossed the line. Even mm -hmm. God bless Snoop. He's out. Snoop Dogg's the best. He's mm -hmm. out there. You know what I mean? He's active. He's he's breaking world records. I can't think of a better thing to do with my time to make the biggest gin and juice ever, and get a whole crowd together for it. You know, um, can't think of anything better to do, really. By the way, Warren G was also there. <laughs> of course he was. <laughs> uh, German Zoo escape. Lions, tigers, and jaguar uh, <laughs> escaped a zoo and a bear. And then they captured them. Apparently it was part of, like, there was a flood. And that was the reason it happened. But it just sounds so funny, like... 
two lions, two tigers, and a jaguar escaped the zoo. Not ostriches, not <laughs> not monkeys. Predators. Alpha predators. <laughs> Whoops. And did anyone get hurt? Did anything happen? Uh, the the bear did, right? The bear. Oh, the bear got hurt. Yeah. yeah uh, was it what kind of bear was it? I'm not sure. It just says that a bear also escaped, but um, they shot him dead for some reason. Here's some footage of the flood. This is this is why it happened right here. Oh shit! First your city floods, and now you got tigers on the prowl for your ass, and they're probably hungry too. Whoops. Okay. Zoos be crazy. Am I right? Zoos. Keep a track of your animals, am I right, people? <laughs> right? Pound it. Keep those, you know what I'm saying? Last story was No Effects the Band. Oh, yeah. Had said some crazy shit <laughs> about the Vegas shooting. So, and what, they got into trouble. What I wanted to say was, you know what? I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to go there. I just. I, when I saw this, I recoiled. I was like, there's been a lot of people talking about certain things being offensive. I saw this and I was like, now that's offensive. <laughs> um, what were the stuff they said? For he example, said, go ahead. Uh, they were, they did a show in Vegas and they just kept going on and on about the, in regards to the Vegas shooting. They're like, at least those fans were country fans or not. In Vegas. Can you yeah. imagine that? Saying that to a Vegas audience? Man, about that Vegas shooting, at least they weren't... At least they were country fans and not punk rock fans. And Vegas. I think he, what he said, it, to be exact, was, I guess you only get shot in Vegas if you are in a country band. Whew. Or they also <laughs> said, we played a song about Muslims and we didn't get shot. Hooray. Play, Those are the clips? quotes of it. I know there's clips. At least they were country friends and no punk. Is there no friends. clips? Um, I'm, uh, I'm trying to find the the cell phone footage. It's pretty bad, but uh, all right. Whatever. At the end, have it ready. at the end, there was a bunch of. Uh, they lost some really big sponsor that was going to do a festival with them, mm -hmm. and they they apologized on their social media, Facebook, Twitter, and now. Oh, I gotta They're see thinking it. of like an a, even better apology. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a video that was like really brutal. Uh, All right, whatever. We don't have it. Yeah. So that's it. That's all we got. Um, what do we do? We have anyone coming next week on the show? Not right now. Not yet. But we've got some great big ass guests coming. I will let you know when we figure out who those great big ass guests are. We know. Uh, well, you you said that Tom is coming. Tom Segura we got next, and then uh, I think it's the week after that we've got. Um, I know it's two weeks after that. Uh, Crystalia is coming in. Very excited for that. Yeah, that should be fun. Mm -hmm. And then Bo Bo is coming in. Yeah, we got Bo Burnham. Uh, I believe the week after that. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that's really? July sixth. I'm excited, man. July sixth, we got Bo Burnham. And on Monday evening, we are going to be. I don't know if does does Bobby live stream his podcast? That's a good question. That's a good question. Well, I've either never, way, we're, I've never caught it live. Yeah. Well, night. I, I. Yeah, I'm not sure. Either way, we're going to be doing that on Monday. We just posted a new video on H3. If you guys haven't seen it, a lot of fun there. There's some new t-shirts on teddyfresh.com. Check them out. <laughs> and uh, that's about it, guys. Thanks for bearing with us. This was a steady decline. <laughs> it got, it was started bad, it got good, and then it just steady decline. Maybe that's the way to do it. Either way, thank you for watching. We will thank be here so next week. Um... Shredder is literally pulling up the carpet. <laughs> Shredder's like, let me the hell out of here. Guys, have a great weekend. Love you. Thanks for sticking around. Wish you the best. Ta-ta. Appreciate you. All the great things in the world. The best to you. Love, happiness, and so much more. Everything you ever desired. A beautiful tailpipe to put your dick in. A butthole fleshlight. <laughs> um, a hot mom. 
whatever it is in your heart's desire this week, and I hope you attain it. <laughs> and with that being said, I am going to enjoy this weekend. I know I will. Either you going to enjoy this weekend? Yep. Dan? Oh, yeah. Ian? Oh, yeah. Yep. No yeah, comment. Yeah, yeah. Ian's, he's no back on the comment. Kanye forum, so he's gone. He's making no. a new PowerPoint. All right. Guys, we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. Papa bless. <laughs>